Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the first open consultations and MAG meetings for the 2016 IGF. I'd like to welcome you all. And just before we start, I'll just make a few points. Um, if you want to make an intervention, could you please either raise your hand or your nameplate? And then we'll write your name down on a piece of paper, and the chair will call your name when your um, turn comes. Uh, when your name is called, can you please just uh, state your full name slowly for the scribes and the, your organization, and then you can state your um, intervention. We're also going to have some remote participation, so it's very important for, for them as well because they cannot see you. Okay, um, with that, I would like to introduce our chair, Ms. Lynn St. Amour. Thank you. As Shengatai just said, uh, my name is Lynn St. Amour. I'm chair of the 2016 um, IGF Multi Stakeholder Advisory Group. Um, and I'd like to give a warm welcome to everybody here. I just had a volume. Is, can anybody, everybody hear me? Okay, thank you. Um, so this is the first meeting in a series of preparatory sessions for IGF 2016. And I think has already been stated quite a number of times on the list, we're in a, a slightly compressed timetable um, due to the events late last year. Um, I'd like to move um, forward at this point with an adoption of today's agenda. So I know there have been a number of um, comments on the mailing list. Um, I, the secretary had actually informs me that those comments have been taken into account. I think I'd like to make one additional point, and that was that Virat had um, kindly suggested that we should move the introductions of the MAG members from tomorrow to today, and that that would facilitate discussions. Um, I have to say that my concern with doing that is it never takes less than an hour to introduce all the um, incoming and outgoing MAGs. And from my perspective, that takes away from the open consultation. Um, mm -hmm. As it is, we have six hours and a very, very full agenda. So I think with everybody's forbearance, what I'd like to do perhaps is just in two waves ask the incoming MAG members to stand up for a moment so that everybody can sort of get a sense of who's here and where they are around the room. And then I'll ask the current MAG members to do the same. And then we will hold the uh, fuller introductions to tomorrow. So I do hope that's OK with the MAG and, and certainly with Virat, who introduced. Again, my goal is simply to maximize the open community um, consultation time. So if that's OK, could I ask the incoming MAG members to just stand up for a moment? <laughs> Okay, excellent. And obviously, welcome. We'll have um, a much fuller welcome tomorrow. And could I ask the current or returning MAG members? Okay, thank you. And I also have to recognize that this, of course, leaves out those MAG members that are participating in, through our online um, mechanisms. So I would like to um, thank them. That's not uh, the easiest way to participate in these sorts of meetings, but certainly putting the time and effort into it is much appreciated. And I really hope they do feel um, that they can contribute um, fully. And we will do our best to continue to recognize them and, and encourage that. So the, um, the, I'll, I'll just describe the agenda briefly, and um, then we'll move to, to approve it. So we'll start out this morning with a number of comments from um, the honorary co-chairs, both outgoing from last year's IGF and incoming. And I'll do those introductions in, um, in a moment. We then move for the bulk of the morning to the taking stock of IGF 2015. Um, and the intent there is to look at the achievements, challenges, um, and to do that with a view to how that impacts and what implications it might have for uh, IGF 2016. Um, I'd like to conclude that by lunch, although we may need to um, continue it uh, for a short period of time in the afternoon session. Uh, we'll come back at 3, 
And at that point, we're actually going to have a presentation and open discussion on the uh, outcomes of the December 2015 high-level meeting of the General Assembly on the overall review of the implementation of the outcomes of WISIS, including, of course, which was the IGF um, mandate, um, a very kind of momentous point, I think, in Internet governance uh, world. So with that, um, I'd like to put forward the question of endorsing the agenda, and I will look for any comments or questions. Seeing none, I will take our agenda. Sorry. Uh, thank you. Good morning to all, and congratulations to you. Working. Yeah, working. Yeah. I just wanted to, uh, to have the uh, password for the Wi-Fi. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, what's the password? It's W4C16. So with that, I will take the agenda for today's open consultation as approved. Um, now on the um, panel here this morning, I will just do uh, now a very brief introduction and we'll have a fuller introduction and certainly many thanks um, over the course of the, the morning. Um, we actually have Wamin Kwok, who's a representative from UNDESA, and he will address us um, shortly. We have Ambassador Benedicto Fonseca, who, as you all know, um, is the honorary um, outgoing chair. He was the honorary co-chair of IGF um, 2016, and he's an ambassador of Brazil with the Ministry of External Relations. And then immediately here to my left, we have the honorary co-chair um, for IGF 2016 Mexico, Mr. Victor Lagunas, who is the Chief Information Officer for the Head of the Unit for Innovation and Technology Strategy, Office of the President, Republic of Mexico. And I'd like to obviously warmly welcome all of them. And uh, you all know Chengatai, but it doesn't feel right not to do some sort of introduction. Chengatai from the Secretariat. So if um, I'm not mistaken, at this point, we move directly to comments from um, Waimin. Thank you, Chang. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm pleased to read this statement on behalf of Mr. Wu Hongpo, Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs. I quote, on this occasion of the first open consultations and multi-stakeholder advisory group meeting, of the 2016 Internet Governance Forum, I would like to extend on behalf of the United Nations Secretary General our warm welcome and greetings to the chairperson and membership of the MEC. I also would want to thank the government of Mexico for hosting the 2016 IGF. Our thanks also go to all MEC members and multi-stakeholders for their past work that have, uh, had, have had a profound effect on Internet governance today. I also thank Ambassador Yenis Kaklins for his leadership as the MAC Chair over the past two years. Most of all, I would like to express my deep appreciation to all of you as stakeholders representing the wider global community. It is your presence that reminds us of the diverse perspective on the Internet and the importance of facilitating an ongoing deliberation involving all stakeholders on complex issues affecting the Internet ecosystem. The year 2015 marked a historic turning point for the United Nations and its member states. In September 2015, world leaders adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Anchored in 17 universal, interconnected and integrated sustainable development goals and 169 targets, many of which relating in one way or another to the Internet and the information and communication technologies. Last December, the General Assembly also endorsed the remarkable progress of the Internet and ICT at the overall review of the outcomes of the World Summit on the Information Society. As part of the outcome of WCS Plus 10, the General Assembly acknowledged the role of the IGF as a multi-stakeholder platform for discussion of Internet governance issues and decided to extend for another 10 years the existing mandate of the IGF as set up in paragraph 72 to 78 of the Tunis Agenda. Member States further recognize 
that during that period, the forum should continue to show progress on working modalities and the participation of relevant stakeholders from developing countries. With us here today is the 2016 MEC membership, appointed by the Secretary General to advise and assess him on the program of the 2016 IGF in Mexico. 22 MEC members are new, out of a total of 55 members representing 46 countries from diverse stakeholder groups, a step toward the broader representation of MEC membership compared to previous years. Let me reiterate that the United Nations attaches great importance to the open and inclusive process of the IGF and the multi-stakeholder policy dialogue on internet governance. Together with you, we strive to do more to ensure that the value of multi-stakeholder participation continues to be embraced and broadened to include those who are not yet privileged to participate in this important journey. Together with you and the internet broader stakeholders, we hope to continue improving the working modalities of the IGF and the participation of stakeholders from developing countries. The 2016 MAC and the IGF community have important tasks ahead. Collectively, we need to work harder to bring about greater roles of the IGF and the internet in driving and empowering sustainable development to ensure that no one is left behind. Let us fulfill this vision. I wish you a productive and successful meeting ahead. End of quote. Thank you. Thank you, Wyman. And please pass our regards and thank you to the Under Secretary General. So at this point in the agenda, the calls for a welcome by the MAG chair. Um, I think it's particularly important to recognize all the contributions of the outgoing MAG members. Um, there was a tremendous amount of work last year. I mean, in addition to preparing the program for IGF 2015, there were also an awful lot of other activities associated with the WISIS Plus 10 review that was um, running in parallel. So that was um, an additional set of activities which many of the MAG members supported. And I think the success of that work is clear in that the um, IGF mandate was renewed um, and not only for a five-year period, but in fact for an extended period of, of 10 years. So I'd like to very much um, recognize and thank all the outgoing MAG members for the contributions. And at the same time, welcome the incoming uh, MAG members of which I say this year's task is no less daunting um, because of the expectations that I believe are so high given the 10-year renewal. Um, it's a significant roadway ahead of us. It means we should have, I think, high aspirations and um, big goals to make a difference here. And at the same time, we are working within a slightly compressed time schedule for this year's IGF. But we'll touch on more of those points over the um, over the course of the day. Um, I'm you know, very, very honored to be here as the IGF um, MAG chair. Um, congratulations are obviously due to many for getting us so far. I mean, the IGF and certainly every internet governance effort I can think of um, is best served when it's done in a global multi-stakeholder effort and certainly in a, in a teamwork, a collaborative um, environment. Um, those congratulations extend, obviously, far beyond the MAG to many individuals, organizations, institutions, community groups um, that have all supported um, Internet governance activities and certainly all the intercessional activities that were a part of this greater Internet governance ecosystem. The ones that come to mind, of course, are the best practice forums through the IGF, the dynamic coalitions through the IGF, and also the national and regional IGF initiatives, but there are so many other forums out there, whether it's the Wuzhen Summit in China or Net Mundial initiatives that have all contributed to um, a better, I think, appreciation for Internet matters and what they mean. So um, I think uh, at, at this point, I'd like to thank Andessa and the UN Secretary General for the confidence that I believe they showed in the multi-stakeholder processes. Um, by appointing for the first time a chair that doesn't come from a government background. And um, I think it's a very good recognition of all that we've achieved together and as well as what multi-stakeholder processes can accomplish. Um, it's not a surprise to a lot of us that have worked in these environments for a very, very long time. 
and particularly when we look at what it took to get the internet here after so many decades, it's a very common way of working in some communities, but not in all communities. So again, I really appreciate the recognition um, from the UN Secretary General and UN DESA um, to those processes. Um, I'd also like to specifically thank Chengatai and the IGF Secretariat for all the great work they do, day in, day out. Um, they do a great job with, I have to say, surprisingly few resources. And um, I'm sure they can count on all of us to do what we can to uh, help their efforts as well. This is going to be just as big a lift for them as it is for us with the uh, reduced time frame. And before we pass on to the next agenda item, though, there are a couple of other people I'd like to recognize. We'll come to the hosts of the IGF 2015 and IGF 2016 um, in a moment. Um, so this isn't passing them by. Perhaps we can think of it more as sort of warming up the crowd. But um, specifically, I'd like to thank Ambassador Carklands, um, not only for his very capable chairmanship of the IGF MAG over the last few years, um, but for all he's done since the very, very earliest days of WISIS. Um, I first met him when he um, became engaged as the WISIS II PREPCOM chair in 2004. And he showed great leadership through that process. Um, and um, he's been at all of the key events in internet governance um, since that time. He's participated in roles across many of the internet community organizations certainly within ICANN and the GAC. And I know his attention to other um, entities and other communities in this internet governance ecosystem has been much, much appreciated. Personally, I and the tech community owe um, Ambassador Karklins a lot, just as frankly we owe Neetan Desai and Marcus Kumar a lot. Because when we started engaging in these processes, in fact, there were three communities that were recognized within the UN system. And the internet technical community, those organizations that are responsible for the management of a lot of the critical infrastructure, were not necessarily um, a natural home in those other communities. And they found um, ways to um, include us, to ensure we had a voice. And um, the result of those discussions and those processes is in fact what gave us the fourth stakeholder community, if you will, in this um, IGF system. So, um, you know, Giannis, Neetan, and Marcus as well, as far as that goes, they, they found a way for all voices to be heard. Um, they did that by being open to new ideas, new people, new organizations. They were inclusive and they were thoughtful about the processes, which, by the way, were not particularly well defined and were um, in many instances being made up as we were um, as we were moving forward. Um, it didn't mean in those processes that everyone got their way, but at least, and I'm speaking for myself, I always felt like I had a voice. I felt that I was heard. Um, they took pains to make sure that we understood their decisions. And, um, and to the best we could, um, we're um, satisfied with them, that we were supported. At a minimum, the rationale was always known. Um, so by and large, I think that worked well and has been a key piece of the internet governance um, activities since then. Um, I hope we can keep a lot of those principles up as we go forward. And with that, I'd just like to, to thank and recognize Ambassador Karklins for all his activities to internet governance over the years. He has been very supportive of me in this role. I've worked with him for a very, very long time. He has said he would make himself available as um, needed to support me, and I greatly appreciate that. And he will be joining us tonight at the cocktail reception, which follows immediately after this. So everybody will have the opportunity to thank him in, in person. So with that, and excitingly, now with the renewal of the IGF for 10 years, um, let's move on to the work of IGF um, 2016. So I'd like to induce Ambassador, introduce Ambassador Fonseca, um, and he's going to make a few comments on IGF 2015. I'd also like to thank um, Ambassador Fonseca for going, I think, far and beyond what is perhaps normally seen in an honorary co-chair for an IGF event. And again, that was because of the WISIS plus 10 events. 
um, Benedicto went out of his way, I think, to ensure that the IGF um, was present in many key events um, and forums over the course of the year as part of the WSIS Plus 10 review, actively supported um, the WSIS Plus 10 having a um, session at the IGF uh, in uh, 2015 in Jalapa Pessoa, and certainly supported um, those similar activities back in New York as well, which was incredibly important. So I would just like to recognize that at the same time as we recognize what a tremendous, tremendous event IGF 2015 was. So with that, Ambassador Fonseca. Uh, good morning to everyone, and thank you, Lynn, for those very kind words. Uh, I welcome the opportunity to address the plenary at this moment in time, and personally, it's a great pleasure to meet all of you uh, colleagues we have been working with in the last few years, and also incoming MAG members. Uh, we are very honored and proud to have hosted uh, IGF 2015 in Jean Pessoa last November, and with your indulgence, Madam Chair, I'd like to turn to the MAG members from Brazil. Uh, we have two MAG members, uh, uh, Flavio, uh, Professor Flavio, from uh, representing uh, technical community, and also Jandir Santos, who represents Brazil as a former host country. Uh, let me also uh, acknowledge the participation, the presence here of Professor Hartmut Glaser. Many of you know him very well. He's the executive secretary of the Brazilian Steering Committee. We, we are very honored that he could join us here, together with other uh, members of the Brazilian Steering Committee, Carlos Afonso and Tiago Tavares. Uh, I think this is uh, also a witness. This also witnesses our commitment to this process. I'm very uh, uh, honored with your very kind words in regard to my participation in those processes in the last few years but it is just something we do in alignment with what we have been doing in Brazil in that regard. Uh, one thing we used to say is that even 10 years before the WISIS outcome documents, which endorsed the notion of that internet governance should be multi-stakeholder and involve all stakeholders in their roles and uh, responsibilities, 10 years before that we have been doing this in Brazil with the Brazilian Steering Committee. So we are very comfortable in working with this environment and we are doing uh, in, in an international environment something we have been trying to, to address in Brazil. And just before then turning to the MAG members for their statement, let me just uh, assure uh, Victor Lagunes and the Mexican government that we'll be more than pleased to work and support everything in our, to our capacity to make sure we have a very successful meeting in Mexico this year. So, thank you. Thank you, Ambassador, Madam Chair. On behalf of the host country of the 2015 IGF, let me reiterate the satisfaction of the government of Brazil for having hosted this memorable event. The 10th IGF took place during an important time for the future of internet governance. It happened amidst several key processes. The WISIS Plus 10 process, in which IGF owns a own extension was decided. The IANA transition, seen by many as an important test for the multi-stakeholder model as a whole, and in the wake of the adoption of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. As you know, more than 2,400 registered participants from no, over 116 countries attended the meeting, with thousands participating online. The overarching theme for the IGF 2015, Evolution of the Internet Governance Empowering Sustainable Development, was chosen mainly because of the United Nations General Assembly at the time had, had just adopted the 2030 Agenda for the Sustainable Development. It's important to rem remember that. Output-oriented debates and discussions during the four-day meeting address both opportunities and challenges under different sub-themes. The meeting hosted more than 150 sessions throughout the week and provided the broader IGF community an opportunity to contribute on a variety of significant outcomes. Among the main highlights, Madam Chair, let me name just a few. IGF 2015 was planned in consultation with the Brazilian government 
in accordance with the guidance provided by the MAG. Let me recall that in Brazil, the preparatory work, both in terms of logistics and substance, was carried out by the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, as mentioned by Ambassador Fonseca. In line with the CSTD working group recommendations, the IGF demonstrated its capacity to produce tangible outcomes within multi-stakeholder collaboration frameworks. Let me mention just one of them, the policy options for connecting the next billion process, produce a tangible and community-driven bottom-up IGF output. The compilation output document and the comprehensive collection of inputs and contribu contributions to the process was forwarded to the other related processes with the request to further disseminate this information as widely as possible to make public officials aware of the work. Another point, co-facilitators of the WISIS Plus 10 high-level review, Ambassador Janis Maizeks, permanent representative of the Republic of Latvia, and, and Ambassador Lana Nusebi, permanent representative of the United Arab Emirates, attended the 10th IGF. The report from the consultations held at the IGF on the WISIS Plus 10 review was duly forwarded by the co-facilitators of the process and informed the outcomes of the WISIS Plus 10 meeting. Our, our understanding was that this report was instrumental to the final outcome of the WISIS Plus 10 meeting, as well as to the extensions of the IGF mandate. Let me mention as well the youth program. Youth participation was particularly strong during the 10th IGF. A program called Youth at IGF empowered the next generation of leaders and increased the on-site participation of approximately 70 young leaders from Latin America and the Caribbean in debates throughout the IGF. Let me acknowledge at this point the work done by Mr. Tiago Tavares from the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee on coordinating this program. The entire 2015 IGF was webcast and interactive online participation in rich sessions throughout the week, allowing many participants from the developing world to engage with those present in João Pessoa. As you know, real-time transcription was also available to augment the overall participatory experience for delegates in the meeting rooms and following around the globe. 50 remote hubs connected participants from countries all over the world. Then last but not least, let me take this opportunity as the representative from the host country of the IGF 2015 to once again thank the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, in particular Mr. Hartmut Glaser, as well as the all ICG board members for their dedication and professionalism in helping organize this memorable event. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Ambassador Fonseca and the government of Brazil, um, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, um, CGI.br, and certainly Hartmut Glaser. I know what a tremendous job that was. And Nitin Desai um, used to say there are only two types of UN meetings, successful and very successful. I do hope I actually got that right. I would say that IGF 2015 was a very successful meeting. And um, I'm sure we will all have our support and put our support towards Mexico to ensure that we have, Nitin will have to expand his categories, a very, very successful meeting in Mexico. Thank you. So with that, um, we do move to um, the honorary co-chair for IGF 2016, uh, Mr. Victor Lagunas, will share some, some remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Chengetai, for your support and for having visited us a couple of times to ensure that um, Mexico is ready and Mexico's um, um, commitment towards IGF is, is, is valued and it's, um, it's as real as, as our hopes and our, our work towards um, hosting this event. Thank you, Ambassador Benedicto, for, for having hosted the 2015 IGF. Um, I know it's a, it was a tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, success and I, I can only hope to follow in those, in those footsteps as part of, um, of, of my Mexican delegation, as part of the Mexican uh, uh, organize, organizing committee. I know you're leaving behind the heritage um, throughout the multi-stakeholder um, um, ecosystem, 
and I will uh, make an effort uh, throughout my team and the ecosystem in Mexico just to build upon that. Um, and, th and thank you to uh, thank you to uh, all of you to um, to 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 receive us. Um, today, really, I have the opportunity to represent the federal government, the Mexican federal government, um, to host the next Internet Governance Forum meeting. Um, I would like to raise our appreciation to UNDESA and the IGF Secretariat and the multi-stakeholder Internet community for all the support and involvement in the preparation process. Internet has, be has become an extremely powerful tool to democrat democratize access to information, enable public and private digital services, and enable human rights to promote freedom of expression. In short, to create a more equal society through the achievement of sustainable development goals and the WISIS action items. During the WISIS Plus 10 process, Mexico, along with the international community, agreed to renew the IGF mandate for another 10 years. This is a pure sign of confi confidence on the strength of the multi-stakeholder cooperation. At the same time, the renewal of the mandate is an opportunity to reinforce the IGF and better reflect all the amazing work of the multi-stakeholder community. Mexico is truly committed to the IGF principles and values and has proven this as an, as in, within the national and international fora. Um, we have a, a presentation that we're working towards um, tomorrow agenda. Um, we actually believe that we, that we should share it with you today. Uh, mind that uh, we're, we were still working on it. Um, really, this is an effort to, uh, to have an open discussion and, and, uh, and your feedback towards making this uh, the first kind of, um, a conversation around the lines of strengthening the IGF 2016 in Mexico. Let's go ahead, Jolan. Mm. Yeah. So our goal um, really is to host the best IGF um, that uh, that we can host, and this is and this is um, really to build upon the the last ten iterations. Um, we can only, as I said, um, hope to strengthen what happened in Brazil in Joao Pesau, Pessoa, um, and the reality is that um, Mexico is quite. Uh, thrilled, quite excited. Um, the community and the ecosystem in Mexico is, is ready. We've hosted the regional IGF last year, uh, tremendous success, as well as the ELAC forum, um, with a lot of um, inertia and a lot of conversations happening, not around the, the, the technical lines, but also around the human rights issues that, are, that have been at, um, making inroads um, more and more into the internet ecosystem. Um, Mexico is the third, um, the third largest uh, IT, services, IT services exporter. Um, according to our National Chamber of ITC, um, 4.1 of our GDP comes from the ICT sector itself, and this is only growing. The investment into ICT, um, it's only growing, um, and, it's actually and we're actually capitalizing that uh, for our younger generations. Um, second largest recipient of software projects uh, um, within Latin America, following our, our good peer Brazil. As I said, the commitment um, of Mexico to host, to not only host these events, but actually take an active participation and, and share the, the true investment in, in initiatives um, are, um, towards a true, transparent, and, and robust ecosystem. Um, is the reason why we want to host the IGF. We launched our national digital strategy within the national federal uh, government, um, which worked towards um, not only interoperability frameworks, but also connectivity and open standards, um, really in works to, to bridge our digital divide uh, faster and insert Mexico into the information society. We live and breathe our national digital strategy, and I know it may, may, um, may be new to you. This matrix is how we work and how we live our daily, <coughs> our daily lives uh, within government, but also in cooperation with um, civil society, the industry, and the academic sector. As, um, as government officials, we can only respond to social um, and, um, asks, and we do so through our national digital strategy. 
we work around government transformation, which is really improving the discussions or the conversation with our, with our own citizens, or we as citizens. Um, improve digital economy, transform education using uh, new platforms. Um, improve um, e-health and also engage better in, uh, in civic participation and civic innovation through different um, uh, engagement models. Go ahead, Yolanda, please. So this is where we stand. Um, last year we hosted um, the Latin American IGF. Um, we had the pleasure of, of, of having um, in Mex having uh, Chenge Tai and, and, and some of his team in Mexico, uh, and also some of you, uh, also familiar faces helping us through uh, the event. Um, we were active, we had an active participation to the renewal of the IGF mandate uh, last December. And um, we've already had a couple of, um, of visitations from, um, from Chiang Kai's team to Mexico to ensure that the venue itself is, is ready. And the last one was actually just last week. Um, the, <coughs> the reason why we wanted to share this with you is because we, as a, as Madam uh, Chair mentioned, we have, we're in a very short time frame. Um, for the first time, and I, I say this in a, in a very sensitive way, we have only some months to plan the event itself, uh, which is different than having a couple of years or, only, or, or at least a year and a half to select the venue and also plan for a very strong and very open par participation um, uh, forum. We are really looking for your feedback and your open um, thoughts to strengthen the agenda itself, to strengthen the, 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 main, um, the, the main rooms and also the, uh, the bilateral and the, uh, and the workshops. Um, we are presenting this proposal to host the next MAC meeting in Mexico City. Of course, we're taking advantage of the fact that we're hosting the IGF, so hopefully this can be uh, evaluated um, and also um, receive you at, for the next planning session, Cheng We are the, the IGF is, is proposed to, be, to happen on the second week of December, um, starting on the 4th, 5th of December, and, um, and will be hosted in Guadalajara City in the state of Jalisco in Mexico. For those of you who haven't been there, it's beautiful. Can you? Hmm? I'm going to present you a short video um, of Mexico. Oh, no, it's no sound. Yes, sound. You will forgive for our technical difficulties. We were not prepared to do this today. <laughs> it's quite explanatory. Stuff. I know.
because it's the land of mariachi and tequila. The other reasons are not that uh, relevant, I guess. Um, it's a beautiful place for you who, who haven't been there. Um, it, it really represents uh, the core of what Mexico is um, in terms of food, in terms of cultural heritage. And also, um, it's one of the largest ICT hubs in Mexico today with the largest investments in, in with global companies and also uh, innovation and entrepreneurial um, um, initiatives. The, the, um, the place that we were fortunate enough to have been um, granted is, it's called the, um, the Instituto Cabañas. Um, it's, it was declared um, a, a, a global her um, heritage by, by UNESCO. Uh, we, were, um, we were there last, just last week and um, just walking through it, it's a big museum. Um, we will have active uh, um, exhibitions at the same time as, as the IGF is happening. So all the your bilateral meetings will actually happen in, inside a museum, um, which is uh, basically based, um, uh, dated from the colonial area of, uh, of Mexico. We, um, we already met and got support from the different federal and state level agencies. Everything from logistics all the way into um, security response and, 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 and health response um, units. And um, we're um, happy to share with you that we will be taking control over the whole museum, which is, uh, which is uh, like a, a big feat. We had to move um, the meaning to start on the first week of December, second week of December, uh, based on the in different international uh, events that were happening uh, on the month of November. I do hope that this doesn't uh, go into your December um, holiday planned vacation. Right. Uh, we just share, we're sharing with you a couple of photographs of the, of the venue itself. We will have some open spaces as well as some closed ones for, um, for, for engaging and, and, and active participation. Right. Um, so Guadalajara is, uh, an has an international airport um, 300 daily flights. It was one of our concerns also because, you know, we know an additional hop uh, to get into a destination could bring uh, some challenges. Uh, it, it does have many flights uh, from the U.S., so our, we don't believe it's going to raise uh, that much um, a problem. Um, the venue itself is very close by, and also um, there is, there are um, plenty of hotels nearby, uh, walking distance, and also some that are just like um, around five minute or ten minute cab rides. As I said um, last week, we walked actually the the neighborhood. Um, so there's hotels ranging from the two stars all the way into the five star um, ranges. We're working with our foreign affairs ministry to ensure that um, we can plan to have a very complete um, quorum. Um, we know that um, uh, the event itself will, ho will have um, delegations from most countries. So we will plan in, in advance towards uh, making that happen and, having, um, and not have a challenge um, in, in the days uh, closer to the event. Um, we are planning to have the, the website ready for tomorrow. Uh, we already have the domain uh, selected, but we are, we are actually planning to present that or launch it, launch it tomorrow. 
Um, Guadalajara itself has hosted many different international meetings and, and forums at, the, at this, uh, uh, for this size already, so we feel confident that this will not present an issue for, for the forum and the venue itself. So with that, we, and we know that we only have some months to go, we're going to have about active participation uh, on the different forums, um, working towards our own um, hosted IGF. Um, if you do have some feedback, some comments, in the ways of ensuring that we really strengthen um, the Mexico's 2016 IGF, more than welcome, we will be receiving them gladly and incorporate that into the, into the, into the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Um, I'd like to turn to Chengatai for a moment just to see if there's anything else he wants to add from the Secretariat with respect to the, the dates or the venue. Um, no, I think Victor covered it most. Uh, we, we saw the venue. It's um, his historic UNESCO World Heritage Site, so it's going to be a very interesting venue. and. Um, yeah, we look forward to it. It does look like a tremendously beautiful site. Um, let me open the f uh, floor up for questions, though, if there are any kind of comments or questions at this point in time. Hartbutt. For us Brazilians. So the question is, will Mexico offer free visa or not? We, we have raised, we have raised the, the topic with our Foreign Affairs Ministry. Usually for international events, they do not waive the fee for the visas. What they do is they expedite the process. So they will help along the lines. We're still working towards that. But the, the first response that our Foreign Affairs Ministry gave us was that they, um, they're they invested into ensuring that the process is expedited. Um, but as of, to, as of today, the fee itself is not waived. Can you. Can you. Yes, and just to add, just to add to that comment, uh, with many countries and the list of the countries will be on the website available tomorrow, do not require a visa or in, some t in many other countries we do have arrangements for visa waivers. So we, we're going to make sure that we have available the entire list of countries that have agreements with Mexico and we're going to keep working with our Foreign Affairs Office to make sure that we have uh, an expedite process on, on those countries that require visa. Um, <clears throat> thank you for thank you for the excellent presentation. Um, the uh, Hartmut Glosser took about two mag meetings to get us to pronounce Gio Pessoa. I'm going to request you to pronounce it for us so that we know the destination and we can pronounce it well. <laughs> uh, he started in December. <laughs> he succeeded in May. But we will try and do it on day one if you can pronounce it slowly for us so that we can get hold of it. <laughs> I'll, I'll try my best. <laughs> it's uh, Guadalajara. <laughs> so say it with me. <laughs> it's Guadalajara. Guadalajara. <laughs> oh, no, he knows. Harvard knows, but Harvard knows everything. <laughs> I think Herman's in the queue next, and we'd like to remind everybody to please state their name and, if they could, which stakeholder group they're um, from as well that will help with the relationships. Herman Valdez uh, from the uh, Number Resort Organization. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Victor, for the uh, information. Uh, I know the place is a really beautiful place. I'm really looking forward to to, to go to Guadalajara and uh, be part of the IGF in 2016. My question, I think it was uh, partially answered by, by Jolanda, but maybe you can have confirmation when we will have the uh, all the information about visas and uh, hotels um, in the uh, local uh, IGF website, when we can expect to have that information. So tomorrow we're launching the, the website. You'll have uh, uh, most information there. We're working, um, you know, we're not, we haven't stopped working since, uh, since, we, uh, since we started really working with the Chengatai team. Um, so we're gonna be up uploading and uh, of, of course um, improving the information as we go. But we hope that we'll have enough information tomorrow to, um, to start uh, giving us feedback, I guess. Thank you. Um, Omar is next. And before I go to him, I want to remind everybody that this is, in fact, the open community consultation. So um, everybody is very warmly invited to speak. This is not just the forum for the MAG members. And in fact, when we move into the later sessions, we will prioritize non-MAG members' um, participation um, ahead. Again, it is the open community, so everybody should feel free to, um, to comment. Omar? Uh, hi, um, I'm uh, Omar Ansari, a newcomer at the IGF MAC. Uh, uh, you proposed uh, the second MAC to be held uh, at the Mexico City, and the event is at the Guadalajara. Um, I suggest it would be better if that, uh, that the MAC meeting is also in Guadalajara so the members can see the venue. Uh, in the arrangements. Um, the second uh, issue is with the, the visa, especially for the developing countries. Mexico does not have embassies in all countries. Uh, it uh, gets really difficult for individuals to go to other countries for uh, visa purposes. Um, are there any special arrangements for the countries, participants from the countries where there is no um, Mexican mission. So as, as I mentioned, we have a full support of our foreign affairs ministry. Uh, we have around 120 uh, embassies and consulates. Of course, most of them are located within the U.S. Um, yet we do have global presence. I, I, you're right, we don't have uh, consulates and embassies in, in all countries. Uh, we do have the process to expedite that. There's many things that can be done uh, remotely or online, but then again, um, to to receive the visa, it's it has to be face-to-face uh, -to -face, uh, within the closest consulate. Our investment there is to ensure that that happens in a in a in, in a fast way in an expedited process. Um, and uh, and we take your 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 comment around the mag being hosted in Guadalajara. Uh, face value, we, we, we can, uh, we can in here, I, I guess, decide if that's a point that we can actually pursue, uh, whether it's best to host it in Mexico City or in, in Guadalajara. But thank you. Thank you. Sagoon? Please, can you hear me, please? Okay. Uh, first and foremost, I want to um, apologize for coming late. Um, it's not intentional. And uh, secondly, I want to appeal that uh, we find it difficult to hear at the back. So if effort can be made to increase the volume. Then number three, I um, want to support the notion that... Oh, sorry, my name. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Shagun Holukbele. I'm from Nigeria, the CEO of Continental Project Affair, an athlete of Africa. Um, I want to support the notion that the second man meeting should be hosted uh, in Mexico because it will allow her to see, um, to, uh, 
evaluate and see the preparation that the host country has been making. Just to lend my voice to that. Thank you. Thank you, Sagoon, and thank you for <laughs> the comment and the volume. I think it has given quite a number of people some problems, so hopefully that can be, um, can be addressed here. Uh, the next speaker is Morad, please, yes. with the floor. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, I would like to congratulate Mexico for, um, uh, as the host country for the next IGF, and uh, I have no doubt nice to uh, that the city yeah, of Guadalajara and the Mexican government sure. will live up with their uh, reputation as an organizer of world-class events. This is not just a compliment, but uh, exper personal experience, uh, because I have been in uh, Guadalajara in 2010, attending the ITUPP. Uh, having said that, uh, I wish that the Mexican government will take um, uh, into consideration the, the comments made about um, some logistical aspects of previous IGF uh, sessions in order to improve things. Thank you very much. Of course, and thank you for your comments. We've been reviewing um, the feedback recent from, uh, from the 2015 IGF, and really it's, it's a learning experience. Uh, we're going to take that um, event and as, as well as the feedback from that event, as well as your, your contributions towards making uh, the 2016 IGF uh, the best one possible. Marilyn Cade, you have the floor. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Cade. I want to also join with others to thank Mexico for um, the very, I, I think, almost inspiring uh, invitation for us. I confess to having um, been to Guadalajara a couple of times before for uh, the World Congress on IT, which was very successful. And for those who are not familiar with um, Jalisco and Guadalajara, there are a very significant number of high-tech companies that have a strong presence there. And perhaps we can uh, look ahead at how to encourage both SMEs and also um, more expansion of the business uh, and industry sector in participating. But I took the microphone to uh, make a comment. Um, I, I welcome the idea of holding one of what I think will probably need to be uh, two more face-to-face -face working sessions of the MAG in Mexico. But I would suggest that we may want to um, uh, consider the implications of travel time and of um, whether the visa issues could be addressed um, by the June time frame. Um, and we may want to um, think about returning to uh, Geneva because I suspect we're going to have a maybe even a four-day working session coming up ahead of us, given our compressed time uh, cycle. Um, let me just make one other comment about, uh, I, I want to take this opportunity to mention to new MAG <coughs> members and to other members of the community uh, the debt of appreciation that I believe we owe Mexico for actually stepping forward um, even when there was already a, a host in Brazil who had graciously offered to host, Mexico stepped forward and offered to host in 2016 when we did not yet know that we had the extension of the IGF. And I think that we all owe you a vote of great appreciation for doing that. Thank you, Marilyn. That was well recalled. And if I'm not mistaken, actually, in March of last year, Mexico was the government that put forward the proposal in the WISIS plus 10 process for an extension of the IGF mandate as well. So um, I forgot to mention that earlier in my comments, but that was much appreciated. Um, next, I think we have Mark in the queue. 
Yes, thank you, Lynn. Good morning, everybody. Thank, uh, appreciation, first of all, for your uh, um, taking over the chair of the MAG. Congratulations to you for that. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lagunas, for uh, your presentation and for um, uh, demonstrating Mexico's commitment to the multi-stakeholder model and the IGF in particular. And I very much endorse Marilyn's uh, comments. Uh, Mexico has been a very strong voice and uh, it's been much appreciated. UK government um, is very supportive of the IGF and we welcomed very much Mexico offering to host IGF 11 this year and we will we look forward to participating actively in uh, Guadalajara. Hopefully I've got that right. Um, uh, I, my question is with regard to the week's schedule, in particular um, what's uh, now the convention of having day zero events, which would be on the 5th of uh, December, and in particular whether you can say anything more about um, the likelihood of a uh, a host country uh, forum for government ministers and the high-level officials and also VIPs from the industry as to whether this would be a, a multi-stakeholder forum which we can then uh, alert to our ministers and stakeholders uh, in the UK and in Europe and, and elsewhere of course. Is there anything further you can say about um, the likely schedule uh, for uh, the 5th? Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Um, what we can share today is, um, in, in, in summary, um, is yes, we would very much like to have a high-level um, ministerial meeting. Um, taking the comments from the 2015 IGF, I understand that there's, there, there was some feedback around having the day zero moved into either mid-IGF or the latter part of the IGF. Um, to ensure that our, our ministerial um, um, delegations uh, take advantage already on the on the lessons learned or already the, the summaries provided by the IG, IGF workshops themselves. Um, really, I think it's, it's open discussion today and we'll be welcoming uh, your feedback as to ensure whether we do want to host it as a day zero, meaning before the inaugural um, day or whether we, uh, we, we push the, uh, the high-level meeting uh, some days after the inaugural, the, the inaugural speech. Um, as to the, the industry VIPs and so on, we're very much considering it as well. We do have a, a strong presence, of course, in Mexico um, for global <coughs> companies that are very much invested and, um, and taken advantage of what the internet provides. And we do believe we can actually have a, a very big quorum uh, of, of industry VIPs coming, or industry uh, um, uh, champions or leaders coming into Mexico to share with us and collaborate with us in the, in the, um, in the discussions. Uh, thank you, Victor. Um, I think at this point, um, Ambassador Fonseca would like to say a few words, and then the last question was probably a good segue to the next session. Um, the next session would actually look at IGF 2015, take stock, and again, that is supposed to inform our discussions for 2015. Um, the day zero is, is um, a specific item under there, and I think just, just one um, point that we need to recognize that the day zero certainly has had a high-level ministerial event in the last four or five IGFs, I believe, but there are other events that take place in day zero as well. So I think when we're talking about the day zero events, we need to be sort of um, quite specific about which set of events we're talking about because they do um, start to impact, particularly the high-level ministerial meeting, starts to impact the discussions around the opening ceremony as well. So if we can just make sure and pull those apart thoughtfully, I think our conversations will be well served. Um, but Ambassador Fonseca. Thank you, Madam Chair. And just very briefly to go back to what uh, Marilyn has initially stated and yourself as well. I think it's very important to acknowledge the very important impact that the announcement made by Mexico early last year on its intention to host uh, the IGF this year in the context of the WIS plus 10 negotiations. Uh, we followed very closely those negotiations in New York and I personally I followed the last uh, 
months of negotiations, and I can uh, assure you it was very important to have on the table the Mexican offer because it indicated a very clear, concrete interest on the part of a member, a delegation supported by others to pursue the IGF beyond the, uh, the existing 10, at the time, the 10-year mandate that was before us. Uh, and, of course, the, the intent and the indication that a 10-year extension would be uh, our, let's say, realistic goal, I would say, in the context of the negotiation, I think this was also very important. Uh, other proposals were on the table, just to recall that my own delegation, we could support even to make uh, IGF a standing body, a permanent body, because we are convinced it fulfills a unique role in the context of uh, uh, internet governance discussions. But I think 10 years was the realistic uh, goal we uh, successfully could achieve. And uh, we fully concur and we are enthusiastic about the goal you have set to make Guadalajara the best ever IGF. Uh, we think uh, IGF meetings should be incremental in their games. One of the messages that also emerged from the WISIS Plus 10 outcome document is that we should continuously improve our working methods and the, the processes that lead to uh, outputs of those IGF meetings. So we are uh, we hope this will indeed take place in Guadalajara, that we can build on what has been done before. And certainly, again, we want to contribute to that to the extent of our possibilities. Thank you. Those were very important points and, and worthy of reiterating some of the earlier ones as well. So I think we have um, Lee in the queue, and then we'll move to the next agenda item. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, for the record, Lee Hibbard from the Council of Europe. I'm the Internet Governance uh, Coordinator uh, of the Council of Europe, uh, uh, an international governmental organization in Strasbourg with 47 member states and observer states, including Mexico, I would point out. And uh, Mexico um, has a, a, a status with the organization and comes to the meetings, many of the meetings in, in Strasbourg, and, uh, and has signed several of the treaties uh, of the Council of Europe and um, um, he's very committed to, to human rights, rule of law, and democracy. Uh, welcome, Chair. Um, great to have you. Uh, thank you. I echo your uh, uh, thanks to Yanis Karklin, a, a really an excellent chair, and uh, it really was a pleasure to, to work with him. Uh, thank you, of course, to our Brazilian uh, uh, friends and colleagues, the authorities. I, I personally speaking, it was a very efficient and uh, dynamic uh, and very friendly IGF. Very friendly IGF, I would say, too, because it was really a pleasure. Everybody, everybody was smiling. It was, a, it was a very good atmosphere. I think it was very good for dialogue. Um, thank you, of course, to the IGF Secretary, of course, to Chengatai and colleagues, to being, always being open and accessible. Um, the Council of Europe has been very supportive since the start of the Internet Governance Forum way back when, in 2006, and has been there ever since. Um, last June, uh, the 47 member states adopted a declaration uh, on block uh, in support of WSIS Plus 10 and proposed and agreed upon proposing a 10-year extension of the IGF. So it's really great that we were able to feed that into the WSIS Plus 10 process last year. I hope that helped uh, those of you who are in New York in the process running up uh, to have that 47 block countries uh, support the Internet Governance Forum. Uh, it was really important for the Council of Europe back in Strasbourg. Um, the UN General Assembly resolution, of course, is very important because from a Council of Europe perspective, it gives legitimacy to the whole process. Um, to, when you talk to ambassadors, when you talk to member states, one should not underestimate the importance of the legitimacy of having this acknowledged at, at your level, at the UN level. So that's very important. Also with regard to human rights, rule of law, democracy. So we, we, you know, as organizations, we're very mutually reinforcing, I would say. Uh, on that basis, last week, uh, the member states adopted a new Council of Europe strategy on internet governance for four years, um, supporting uh, dialogue, supporting IGF, supporting the Eurodig, supporting national and regional forums on, on internet governance. I have colleagues going to the Southeastern European Dialogue on internet governance soon. Some are going to the Russian IGF this week in Moscow. Um, it, you know, we, have, we have a new mandate to support you in the work of the IGF uh, and national and regional levels. So that's very important, so that's why it's mutually reinforcing to have this work uh, build on our work and, and vice versa. 
Now, just, just a few points on feedback for, for, for agenda item two. Um, Again, it was a great pleasure to see so many stakeholders that you mentioned, Madam Chair, especially youth. Of course, we can only welcome that and encourage that. Um, we noticed um, that still there needs to be more, perhaps more participation of state authorities, government officials, judges, prosecutors, law enforcement. Were they really there? You know, was there enough there to discuss these issues? Whether it be mass surveillance or cybersecurity? I really think we should try to push that a little bit more. A good range of topics which helped us because when you're covering not one topic but many topics ranging from literacy to crime, you, you know, it's very important to have a range of topics so you can go and take part because if the, if the mandate is narrow, it's very difficult to, to, to justify traveling to, to a place for four or five days. Um, I would underline the access to VIPs such as the UN Special Rapporteurs, David Kay, Joe Kanatachi, etc. Very important because it's very important that you know, we can talk to these people on the side of meetings and also have them in meetings. Very important to have their, you know, um, uh, to, to get VIPs, our own VIPs there to talk and to network, etc. cetera. Um, we had a couple of open forums, one which was a joint open forum with the UNHCHR, um, sorry, the OHCHR, um, which were, uh, could have had better participation. I think there's a problem of signposting um, uh, of uh, perhaps um, needing, I think I would seek help from, from you, from the Secretariat, to know how to better communicate these forums, which are generic, uh, to, so that we can get more participation. Um, I would say that one of the meeting rooms was so noisy we had to put our headphones on to, to, to speak. Um, but still, it was, it was still very good. Um, perhaps too many panelists sometimes still in, in different events. Uh, the opening ceremony, the length and the style, you know, does it fit with the spirit of Internet Governance Dialogue? Uh, and workshop planning was um, uh, sometimes last minute, but that's, uh, planning is also, you said, very important. And finally, I would say that uh, wh what you said, Chair, which is that the things like the policy options work, the work in which we've written things down and an analyzed uh, issues is very important. More analysis is, of course, very welcome, very much needed. It helps us to, to di disseminate in our own networks and show the gravitas of the work that's being done. Uh, it's very easy to scratch the surface on issues and to go round and round and round, but I effectively I think it's very important to go down and drill down more, and if we can demonstrate that over the next years, that we can really do in-depth analysis, I think we're on the right track. Thank you. It's exactly what my announcement is about. <laughs> <laughs> We've actually been informed that the norm for this room is that you need to wear your headsets in order to hear properly. That is the way the sound system is actually um, managed. So um, they're doing what they can to get the volume to a level. Um, but if you're not hearing properly, um, please wear your headsets. There is translation. It, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate we only have translation in two of the six UN languages, and it's French and English. I'm assuming it's zero and one, since English is on zero. Um, but please do wear your headsets if you're having difficulty with, um, with any of the sound. And again, we're going to go to the remote participation in a moment. I'll um, just um, remind everybody again that this is an open consultation. So we really look forward to hearing from um, everybody in the room and with preference from non-MAG members. And certainly we will then encourage MAG members to um, enter into the discussion and, and engage. But we really do want to hear from non-MAG um, members. And now I think, Anya, we're going to a remote participant. I'm Ari Doria. Ari, I'm going to unmute you now so you can speak. Okay, thank you. This is Ari Doria. I'm a returning MAG member and I'm calling for online participation from the IETF in Al Buenos Aires. Uh, I hope you'll forgive me for going back to the visas question. Uh, one uh, question we had last year, and it wasn't possible, but I wanted to ask whether it would be possible this year, is for people to get visas on arrival. For many people, it can be extremely expensive. I know through situations of my own, it was very expensive for me last year. This year, I probably won't personally have the issue with visa costs. But uh, are there also UN guidelines about getting visas on arrival 
for such international meetings. So I'd just like to ask that that be put into consideration while all the visa work is being done. Thank you. Victor or Yolanda, any? I think Yolanda can take the can take this answer because I I can't I couldn't really hear. We're gonna make sure that all the requests uh, regarding visa uh, recommendations and inquiries from the attendants and this open consultation are gonna be taken forward to our foreign affairs uh, minister. And thank you, Avri, for um, coming into um, in the background of another meeting. Okay, well, let me. Um, Constance. Um, we have Constance. Let me just make, because we, we sort of did a gentle segue, I think. Um, right now, we're in the taking stock section of the agenda, um, where we're looking for um, comments, talking about the achievements, the challenges um, of uh, IGF 2015. Um, looking forward to um, any possible implications or recommendations for IGF um, 2016. Um, this is where we'd um, like to, we should come back in a moment to the Secretariat's summary. Um, Chengatai will have a short um, summary and then we will open the floor up um, more fully. But again, this is where we should talk about the program, the logistics, um, intercessional activities, um, day zero, um, suggestions for improvement broadly. So let me go to Constance, and then I'll turn to Chengatai to do a summary to kick off um, more formally that portion of the agenda. Thank you very much, uh, and good morning, everyone, and congratulations to the new chair. I think we're very lucky to have Lindsay Namor in, uh, in this, uh, this role. Um, with regards to IGF 2015, ISOC, the Internet Society, submitted a, a written contribution uh, listing um, the positive aspects, of course, and there were many positive aspects for IGF 2015. I will uh, just um, go through a few of them, uh, a few of the highlights. First of all, the, the logistical arrangements were very good. Um, in addition to that, I think uh, the work that uh, resulted in IGF outputs um, whether the best practices or the policy options for connecting the next billion um, again showed that the IGF was able to evolve and make uh, some progress towards uh, useful outcomes. I think uh, Vince Cerf actually concluded the main session um, on IGF intercessional activities saying it was the most useful thing the IGF had done in 10 years, so I think it's a uh, useful thinking about 2016. Um, about ways how to continue and improve these IGF intercessional activities. Uh, one of our colleagues mentioned it, but IGF, the youth, the youth initiative, worked very well. And I'm happy to say that the Internet Society has already committed to supporting again this, uh, this important initiative in 2016. And um, the last highlight, I think, uh, um, would be the contribution of IGF 2015 to WSIS Plus 10. Uh, that contribution was very important and, uh, and well noted. In terms of possible improvements, uh, very quickly, it seemed that although the past years we were able to focus the discussion and injure, we had perhaps less main sessions and less workshops. Um, in uh, 2015, again, the number inflated and uh, we heard several participants saying that it could be useful to try to focus further discussion, have le less main sessions, less workshops um, in general. And finally, I think uh, it's worth noting um, this idea that it's important to continue improving the IGF working modalities and specifically with regards to intersessional activities. Thank you very much. Um, so with that, I think we'll move to um, formally introduce this agenda item, um, have Chengatai um, go through a short summary, and then we'll come back to the, to the queue. We have Virat and Cheryl in the queue at the moment. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I'm just going to summarize the summary, the 
this paper um, that the Secretariat did um, from the total of 28 contributions um, that we received when we made a call for um, the stock taking session. Uh, the, the purpose of uh, the synthesis paper as well and my summary is so that we don't um, repeat uh, because many of the papers said uh, more or less the same thing, so we just want to shorten the amount of time um, that we have to um, discuss this. S so to start off with, um, most of the contributions express their deep appreciation to the Brazilian hosts for their hospitality during the 10th IGF, as well as for providing an excellent venue and um, supporting team on, on the ground in Joa Pessoa. Um, I think None of us can dispute that this was one of the best organized IGFs that we've had. Um, it was also um, emphasized that um, the IGF 2015 was very easy to navigate and the simplified naming of the rooms was very much um, appreciated. Also, the selection of um, food offered um, for all tastes and all dietary needs and the staff of the conference center were outstanding. So uh, thank you to Brazil for that. Uh, many contributions also thanked UNDESA, uh, the IGF Secretariat and the multi-stakeholder advisory group for the efforts in planning the IGF event and developing its program. And also the MAG chair, Janis Kocklins for his guidance and leadership throughout the preparation process. Uh, um, I'll skip those, I think those are fine. Um, as Constance has said already, uh, many lauded the enhanced participation from the youth and also the special programs that were made um, for youth participation. A number of efforts um, no noted in appreciation the efforts to continually improve the workshops uh, some particularly noted that the 2015 w um, work to help the community submit workshop proposals by clarifying the proposal criteria and developing guidelines that were translated into several languages um, to help by community volunteers. This simple step um, helped a lot um, for the quality of the workshops that were um, submitted, especially from developing countries. Other con contributions, however, noted that there were too many workshops at the IGF and some workshops were duplicative in content and had limited speakers. Uh, some say that it was better to combine them. And just a comment from me, it's, we always have this, shall we merge workshops? And it's an ongoing discussion, um, the value of merging these um, workshops together. Um, having fewer workshops with click clearer criteria for accepting workshop proposals. Um, many contributions um, appreciated the 2015 intersessional work program, which resulted in community-driven um, production of helpful resources on internet policy issues for the benefit of any stakeholder interested in the various topics that they addressed. Representatives from many IGF dynamic coalitions also expressed their appreciation for the establishment of a main session for dynamic coalitions at the 2015 IGF and said um, this uh, significant and timely step um, helped towards creating a more formal link between these um, self-organizing thematic groups and the IGF as a larger process. Uh, there, was a co there were some comments say that the main sessions would have benefited from a more interactive communication from moderators as sessions often devolved into roundtables or speeches. Moderated question and answer sessions within panels, in addition to audience uh, question and answer sessions, should be encouraged. Other contributions suggested that uh, better criteria should be set for main sessions and there should be fewer speakers to promote a more interactive discussion. Uh, some say that the ICF should push for a more fact-based sessions and promote non-ideological discussions on different issues. In some cases, um, there were examples of zero rating and net neutrality. Uh, 
where it has been agreed that more research is needed to be done, the sessions should focus more on the research and tangible results rather than ideologies and perceived results. And then um, going on to suggestions and recommendations, looking forward to IGF in the, uh, in the 11th IGF. The MAG should address um, the process of main session organization and the process of which main session topics are determined and the session program developed. On the uh, on intersessional work, um, that the intersessional work should be included in the annual IGF uh, meeting forward and it should be consistent with the IGF principles. Uh, this means providing enhanced guidelines on um, intersessional work and also monitoring from the IGF that, uh, that it takes place throughout the year. Certain rules and policies procedures should, um, should be made about such work and should be universally known at, um, as a prerequisite. Many inputs also noted the growing interest and activity in the national and regional IGF initiatives and recognized the efforts that have been made to bring the ideas from these initiatives into the global IGF, especially um, with the intersessional work. And it was stressed that connecting conversations at different levels of the IGF ecosystem should continue in order to enrich the global dialogue and contribute to ongoing internet um, governance discussions at the domestic and regional levels. Some contributions um, suggested that the workshop and main session proposals and report forms should be reassessed. It was stated that workshops and main sessions should um, do three things, enlighten the audience through informed discussions, address related challenges and or identify opportunities, and three, bring the discussion to a point where ways forward might be agreed upon. Uh, some inputs recommended to reduce the number of main sessions to four or five maximum and um, suggested it to avoid holding them in conjunction with other <coughs> sessions. Best practice forums and other um, stakeholders involved in the day-to-day -day best uh, practice forum work recommended that each best practice forum have the ability to, de to decide its own methods and approaches and this was deemed to be very valuable and contributed to the success of the best practice forums. Um, best practice forum work should continue for the 2016 um, IGF as well. Uh, regarding thematic elements of the IGF program, some inputs noted that the MAG process has matured to allow a more progressive and deeper conversations about particular topics as well as um, accommodate timely hot button topics. Both types of conversations are valuable attributes to the IGF. And it was said um, in this regard, one thing that the MAG to consider is to begin the process towards IGF Mexico in how better to reflect bottom up community input into the sub theme development process. Uh, another side comment from me. I think we have done this, uh, we have started doing this at the moment with the input from the regional and national IGFs into the um, themes and sub-themes. Uh, one suggestion was that the sub-themes of the 2016 should be determined based upon subject areas of workshop proposals as submitted by community rather than designed in advance by the MAG. So a bottom-up process that we receive the workshops um, the workshops first and then um, come about defining the themes and sub-themes from those submissions. One input suggested that um, consideration for the theme, oh, okay, these are just themes for the 2016, I'll just skip that, uh, we'll just um, leave that for further discussions. Um, and then we had um, general comments about um, visa processing um, d varied from country to country, but reinforced the importance of um, the location and dates of the IGF being an communicated um, sufficiently in advance of the conference 
so that to help with uh, uh, participants getting um, the visa. And also that the inf inf more information should be made available in the um, IDF website and also the host country websites to allow people to plan ahead. Uh, many contributions stress that the efforts to improve the working methods of the MAG should continue into 2016 in line with the recommendations made by the Commission on Science and Technology for Development uh, Working Group on Improvements of Internet Governance and in light of the General Assembly's recent call for accelerated implementation of these recommendations. There was also an input that um, commented on day zero and that it now seemed to be an integral part of the IGF and there was need for a discussion on the MAG role in day zero event selection and also transparency on the events. Uh, for Dynamic Coalitions, uh, Representatives from many of the IGF dynamic coalitions proposed an idea for a dynamic coalition coordination group to be created, um, made up of members uh, which will be selected from each of the individual um, dynamic coalitions. And this group could communicate and coordinate between the DCs and the IGF secretariat and between the DCs and the MAG. Uh, one input um, invited the MAG to consider if and how the Global Internet Policy Observatory, GIPO, and other uh, such programs and mapping initiatives could help in the MAG work and in further supporting um, the IGF process. It was also suggested that the main outcome documents produced by the IGF should be translated into all UN official languages to ensure a broader outreach. And I think, yes, I think that's all for the summary. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Changatai, and thank you to everybody who took the time to submit comments um, last year. It's obviously very helpful. Um, we have um, four speakers in the queue. I note that most of them are MAG members, so again, we want to hear from um, uh, other members as well, so please do feel free to, to jump in. So at this point, point in time, Cheryl, I'd like to recognize Cheryl Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry, I'm just getting used to these microphones. For those who don't know me, my name is Cheryl Miller, and um, I'm with uh, the business con community. I look forward to meeting those who I haven't met yet and look forward to uh, working with all of you. Very warm welcome to all the new MAG members and um, warm welcome to the new chair and thank you to all of those outgoing members. Um, I wanted to make a couple of comments on uh, the 2015 meeting. Um, actually, I think it was Lee that mentioned uh, the friendliness of the meeting last year and I couldn't agree more and I think in part what contributed to that was sort of the construction of the IGF village. The actual layout of it really allowed for conversations to sort of flow um, and for different groups to come together. And so I thought that that was a very good um, addition last year. Last year also, it's been said many times, the youth program I thought was a great addition. I definitely think that that's very valuable and worth continuing. Um, and it's important that we all make sure that we continue to seek diversity within that program as well. Um, I do think that uh, last year the main sessions could have been more dynamic. Uh, one of the things that uh, differed uh, between Brazil and Istanbul, I think in Istanbul we actually had fewer main sessions, um, but those main sh sessions um, from my recollection had a higher level of attendance um, as compared to Brazil. Um, but we had more main sessions in Brazil, and so that's something to think about um, as we move forward and, and sort of balance out workshops, main sessions, and how we divide the time over the days. Thank you very much. Thank you. Virat?
Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Virat Bhatia. I also represent the business community. Um, <clears throat> I couldn't um, travel to um, Joe Pessoa for personal reasons, but uh, watched the sessions very carefully remotely. So that was a good experience in trying to assess how the remote piece works and also get an objective view of being slightly far away. Amongst the things that worked exceedingly well, as many have said, um, I think that absolute top thing was free food. Um, I want the hosts to record and the, and the new host to record that nothing pleases people and delegates than free food and food available in plenty. And so, a, you know, I, we can go back to Baku, Bali, wherever you want to go, that really works well. So think about it, but I just wanted to place that one comment that came to people who traveled back and, and, and good food and easily available, easily accessible. So that was one thing that, uh, you know, nobody was running for coupons and stuff like that. The other thing that worked exceedingly well, which is also very visible, was youth. Very, very visible on the screens. Uh, lots of, uh, mostly, I think, Latin American um, young people, but lots of them in many sessions queuing up and, and speaking. So that sort of seemed really well. Uh, the energy was very positive. I um, informed the, the um, staff was very friendly, lots of help available, et cetera. So that worked really well. A um, couple of things that, um, no, not so much the host issue, but actually it's a MAG issue, and I think we need to sort of look at that carefully. And I'm going to sort of boil down that sort of the main sessions and the workshops, which is, becomes the mainstay of the, apart from intersessional work, which is year long, the mainstay of the actual four-day conference is the, is the main sessions and the workshops. Um, we had excellent recommendations for workshops that came out last year. Uh, based on some very outstanding work done by uh, Ms. Susan Chalmers, who's here today with us, and, and Fiona, who's not. Um, outstanding guidelines, evaluation, et cetera, all of that worked really well. Um, in the end, however, I think we went <coughs> to a little more than we should have taken. So we were, I think, I, I'm not sure, but I think about 110 workshops where we could have sort of cut off at about 90, 95. So we just need to know that figure. So once you, because it's four days, it works like a grid. So the moment you go beyond that point, then it becomes difficult to fit things in and, you know, it becomes very tight. So we could, we could do with a little less. I also want to commend the work that was done by the uh, working group on workshops because thanks to them, the developing country workshops were up 200% from Istanbul and first timers were up 150%. And they had set themselves three objectives, increase developing country participation, increase first timers, and have more round tables than panels. And even there was a significantly high number even for, for the round tables with the panels, though I think some people did masquerade panels as round tables that kind of showed up when you were seeing them, but did exceedingly well on the first two, uh, something that we should really be proud of. And the selection procedure worked. So my, I urge that we look at that, those criteria that have been given, and try and work on that and improve if we can, but we have something available. The other one uh, was on the main sessions. Uh, on the main sessions, likewise, we got a very fine set of recommendations from a working group led by Professor Subhi Chaturvedi, who was a member till last year, and her colleague Flavio. I posted some of this um, before this meeting. Uh, an excellent set of guidelines for picking main sessions, et cetera. But this is where I think um, I have to admit that we went off the mark. We started with nearly 11 main sessions in the end. Um, I was sort of asked to put together a working group to discuss this and had uh, my very distinguished colleagues, Cheryl, not withdrawn her very important main session on IGF at 10 and then sort of bring it together in some other main session it would have been virtually impossible to fit in. I think even in the end we had nine main sessions, uh, plus opening and closing. Um, I'd urge that we look at that very differently, and for the new MAG members, just to think of the four days as a grid. It's three hours before lunch, three hours after lunch, there is an opening and there is a closing and there is an orientation, so actually what you're left with is six three-hour sessions for main sessions. 
and I would urge that we very carefully look at no more than four or five main sessions with some breathing spaces. Our former chair very famously quoted that the program should be like Swiss cheese and enough holes should be left in them so that they can be filled in later. Uh, and I think those are the two big learnings. Um, one place where we did exceedingly well, another where I think we can really improve in terms of numbers. We should try and fix those themes early, agree early. And this year, we'll have very little time to... Uh, last year, I think, is the most time we've had between um, MAG meetings and a session. We started December, and uh, we had almost like a year to go before the MAG. This year, we have six months flat, maybe. No, well, now with December, probably uh, seven and a half months. So we have slightly more, but we still need to be very careful about our planning. And that's the, that's the other thing that I wanted to <coughs> leave with you. Uh, the last piece uh, was about the main session room. Um, I had made a request last year, and I wasn't there, but a, a, a main session, it, on an average day, there are 1,500 people in, in the IGF. That's the average for the last few years. To have a main session room that has 1,000 seats makes the main session look as if no one's attending. Uh, even with 150 people, which is three times the number of people here, it would look as if it's virtually empty. So our request to the host is to consider a four or 500 seater room, unless you expect a very large local population, because otherwise they look empty. And that sort of gives a feeling of uh, sort of it isn't going well, and that shouldn't be the, the case. Uh, but if you had a 400 or a 500, like Istanbul, for example, did that really well. They had a 400-member uh, room, and it was almost always full. Almost all of the six main sessions were always full. So these are some small feedback based on what I was seeing visually, some of the mistakes that we made going in. There's time for correction. I would request one, um, one last request for the new MAG member especially. Please do have a look at the recommendations made by the two working groups last year. I think if you want to improve on them, we should talk about that shortly. But if we can um, adopt them for this year, I think we'll be on our way. Because last year, the working group started work in December. And by March, they had those recommendations ready. This year, we don't have that luxury. Thank you. Thank you, Virat. I particularly appreciate the comments as seen from an online um, view, because we're obviously doing everything we can to try and encourage more online participation as well. Uh, next in the queue, um, I think we have remote and then Mike Nelson. Remote. Thank you, Chair. We have one comment from Virginia Peck that I will read. There was also input that online participation must be built into the session organization so that online participation is taken into account not only in infrastructure preparations, but also by session organizers, moderators, and participants. And we have a second intervention from Michael. He would like to speak, if you allow. So, Michael, I'm going to unmute you now. Can, can everyone hear, hear me? Okay. Hi. Um, my name is Michael Ugia. I was one of the 20. Uh, I was one of the um, 2015 ISOC ambassadors, and uh, it's a pleasure to join everyone. I'm speaking from Istanbul. Um, IGF 10 was my first IGF event uh, in general. And it was uh, an incredible opportunity to be a part of it. Um, what my intervention really uh, I want to do with it is to advocate for expendi expanding uh, mentorship programs as well as um, welcome or introductory sessions for newcomers, perhaps in a way that is similar to ICANN. Um, I was very, very incredibly fortunate to have one of last year's MAG members, Susan, as my mentor as part of the ambassadorship. And I can honestly say, that uh, her um, help and her guidance really made the difference, um, in addition to ISOCs, of course, was uh, really made the difference in terms of facilitating my participation in the event. So um, especially as youth programs and youth um, participation is being expanded and wants to be expanded further, rather, um, having connecting individuals that are new to people that have that have the experience of the idea, I think, is one of the most advantageous things uh, that could happen in order to facilitate more robust um, participation and discussion. Thank you. And we have one more intervention from Siva Subramanian from the National IGF. Uh, I will unmute you now, Siva.
the could be smaller and i disagree with that instead the focus could be on separating main sessions and uh, workshop sessions in the sense that uh, uh, during main events uh, we could avoid scheduling workshops that would make the igf far more effective that would improve participation in main sessions as well as in workshops thank you jer uh, michael and shiva as well again appreciate um your staying with us and and your comments uh mike nelson is next in the queue chairman uh, i'm michael nelson it's my third year on the mag uh, i handle global public policy for cloudflare and that's f l a r e i also teach internet studies at georgetown and i'm very active in my washington dc chapter of the internet society um I just wanted to chime in on a couple things. Uh first to say that I agreed with almost everything that Changate reported from the summary except I strongly urge us not to think about having main sessions by themselves without any parallel sessions. Uh I think we really in a way um create a misimpression by calling them main sessions. They're not keynote sessions they're not main sessions they're they're really thematic sessions they're very broad they cover a lot of territory they often cover territory we don't cover anywhere else but they're not really that different um from the other sessions and so i i would urge us to uh continue to do some thematic sessions but i i also agree with verat that we don't need as many and we don't need to have them in all the time slots Uh the other thing I would uh, urge us to do uh, as was done in Jao Pessoa is to involve students uh there are a number of large universities in Guadalajara and uh I found it very useful during the breaks to be able to talk to people who were not thinking about internet governance and internet technology 100% of the time but instead were on the receiving end of the technologies that we were building and deploying uh I also would like to say that um as Ginger said and Verat emphasized that the virtual component of this meeting is going to be even more important than normal. Um as somebody who attended my first I7 IGFs virtually, uh I've seen a lot of improvement in this area, but uh we we can do better and particularly we can do better in enabling people who are part of the online experience to interact with each other and with the people in the room. The reason it's more important this year than most is that uh, Guadalajara is going to be ideally situated to reach people in the US and Europe. So you've got a lot of potential of viewers who can tune in. And then the last um about and following that also uh, I I think we can also do a much better job of advertising ahead of schedule where the webcasts will be available how people can be part of that discussion um in many years past uh people didn't learn about the ability to be part of the online experience until after the fact and then they were able to watch the the videos but that wasn't quite the same and then one more point um one of my few criticisms of last year's IGF was that the location was uh far away from the hotels and it took quite a bit of time for us to get there. I'm glad to see that the venue in Guadalajara is more centrally located. One thing you might think about doing though for this year is to uh take an internet approach to registration. Uh what happened in Jao Pessoa is we all had to show up at the conference site the day before which was a half hour it was an hour long commute or we had to uh wait in line. to get our, our registration. So maybe there's a way to set up registration points at the hotels the day before in several of them so that people can be already registered and ready to go and not have to um to 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 wait. That's a very small point, but it would uh save a lot of time and effort. Thank you very much and again, thank you to Mexico and to Brazil for being willing to host a very important meeting. Thank you, Michael. Izumi You have the floor. Um good morning everyone. Um thank you uh, Madam Chair. Uh my name is Isumi Okutani. I'm a policy liaison at JPNIC, uh coming from the Asia Pacific region and the technical community. 
Um, I would like to first express warm welcome to Lynn as the new uh, chair of the MAG, as well as the new MAG members. I would like to make uh, observations on um, three broad areas. Uh, first, about the local arrangement of the meeting. Uh, second, about the basic framework of planning the meeting. And third, to uh, lightly touch on the contents. So first, on the local arrangement, I really echo our Cheryl's comment about the friendliness of the meeting, um, and I I think it uh, it um, there may be two um, reasons. Well, one of the two um, there may be two reasons. They may not be the only ones uh, behind it. One is that the volunteers were very friendly. I think they were enthusiastic to be a part of this like international event. And I think this, uh, their enthusiasm actually uh, <coughs> reflected to the atmosphere of the venue. So I support um, Mike's comment about having more students helping out in the venue. Uh, second is that we had a common place for lunch. We had a big venue for lunch. And I understand it may be uh, quite challenging to provide free lunch at every meeting. I think for Brazil was you know, being extremely generous. Um, but I think even if free lunch is not provided, having a big common place uh, for lunch helped um, the participants to have dialogue between meetings. So I, I find that really helpful. Uh, I also found the IGF website. Uh, it, it was uh, the local website was easy to find in search sessions. Uh, which topic is relevant? Who are the speakers? So I hope that uh, we can continue this um, this style of website in the coming <coughs> year as well. So um, to move on to the the basic framework of the um, of the meeting, I, I support Avirat's comment about having better planning and strategy about the main session, not just keep on adding one themes after the other, but then having an integrated comprehensive discussions about what should be the themes, and then based on that, think about what the themes should be. Um, and I think it's worth uh, considering um, the recommendations made in the CSTD, as some of the MAG colleagues has uh, expressed on the mailing list. So lastly, to touch on the, on the contents, I, I echo our constant observation about success uh, in producing concrete outputs this year, and intersessional work certainly uh, contributed a great deal on this. And I, I quite like the style of dial combination of dialogue and written documents um, from two reasons. One is it actually helped in diversity. Um, in that the people who are not so comfortable in verbally expressing themselves in microphone, in non, like, people like coming from Asia, they're not, like, so vocal. So having a document really uh, helped them make contributions. It also helped uh, people who are not physically able to participate uh, at the meeting make effective <coughs> and substantial contribution. So I hope that we can consider and continue this style of uh, discussion um, this year as well. Um, and then on national uh, and regional IGF, I think the, it's um, having a common theme uh, like last year was good. And just to add uh, one suggestion for improvement is that I think um, the secretariat was being helpful in reaching out to uh, each of the um, <coughs> regional and maybe some national IGFs online. But to be truly effective, um, you need people to explain what the context is and then what the whole idea behind it is. And I, I was involved in um, the APR IGF, the regional IGF for the Asia Pacific region. So I attended their meetings, explained why, and then I actually tried to coordinate to have the discussions at the APR IGF so that they can actually feed um, into the main session. So I think the MAG members can actually help, coming from diverse regions, can help out in the regional and possibly national IGFs to explain and um, help make contributions if we are going to continue with a similar approach of having a common theme and to encourage um, participation from these uh, IGFs. Thank you. Thank you, Izumi. Christina? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, 
and congratulations for your uh, recent uh, appointment. Uh, my name is Cristina Monti. Uh, I uh, work uh, at the European Commission in the Directorate General for Communication, Networks, Content and Technology. Um, first of all, uh, I'm very glad to be here uh, today. I have to say, usually it only takes one hour to get here from Brussels, but this time, uh, due to the uh, um, recent uh, uh, events that took place in Brussels, it was uh, slightly uh, more difficult to, to be here with you today. Um, and you might also remember that uh, uh, the last IGF also finished uh, um, with the terrible news of the attacks in, in Paris. So, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, these are some of the difficulties we have to face when we have to travel in our um, interconnected world, but uh, here we are. Um, and I, I just wanted to um, say a few uh, remarks concerning uh, this agenda item, taking stocks of uh, IGF 2015. Um, we provided um, a written contribution, which is well reflected in the synthesis paper, um, kindly provided by the Secretariat, so I will not go in, into, into much detail. I just uh, would like to reaffirm our overall uh, positive assessment of last year IGF. Um, it really raised the bar for future meetings. And so the MAG will now need to respond to even uh, increased expectations from the global community and will have to continue to build on previous achievements and improvements, especially now that we have a longer mandate, a 10 year uh, ahead of us. And I, think, I hope that this will also stimulate the MAG into thinking um, longer term in a broader context um, and not just considering one IGF meeting at a time. Um, in general, as has been said, the IGF has run uh, re really smoothly with a positive and constructive mood. Um, it took place in a year that was particularly intense for internet governance discussions and the IGF really managed to connect to the other processes and also to inform uh, such processes like the WISIS plus 10 review uh, and the uh, importance of linking to ICT and uh, the um, post-2015 uh, sustainable development goals. Um, also new formats and ideas were tested and implemented uh, with a view to produce uh, non-binding outputs and recommendations uh, for voluntary adoption on a number of topical issues. Um, so our assessment, again, was very positive. There was a significant and constructive European presence as well, um, um, which is a direct manifestation of the strong EU support for the multi-stakeholder approach of internet governance, which is embodied by the IGF. Um, in terms of participation, we had the, the Vice President of the European Commission present, but also nine members of the European Parliament, um, as well as significant uh, participation of private sector and civil society representatives. Uh, and on this, maybe a, a, a suggestion uh, from the logistical point of view. Um, uh, for for um, European delegates, um, in addition to the official program, it is also very important uh, the bilateral and informal meetings that take place on the margins of the IGF. Um, and we see that with time, these kind of meetings, um, even though they are informal and unofficial, they tend to become bigger and bigger. So sometimes um, also the, the facilities for bilateral meetings uh, also need, need to be taken um, into account. And finally, my last remark, um, Chengetai, you also mentioned um, our suggestion to invite the MAG to consider how the Global Internet Policy Observatory or other uh, mapping initiatives and uh, internet governance observatory tools can be put to use to develop the program or in other ways that the MAG consider useful to uh, carry out their tasks. Um, I was planning maybe to say a few words on, on the global, um, on JIPO, on the Global Internet Policy Observatory, maybe in the afternoon when we will be discussing about uh, um, internet governance uh, uh, developments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christina, and um, look forward to hearing about that at the end of the day today. Uh, next in the queue is Nigel. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, 
Madam Chair. Uh, Nigel Hickson from uh, ICANN, a non, uh, non-MAG uh, member. First of all, uh, I better put my glasses on. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on, on your appointment. I think it's absolutely splendid that you're our chair and absolutely splendid that the uh, UN has chosen a, uh, a non-government stakeholder for the first time. Really, really positive. Uh, I'll, try and be, uh, I'll try and be brief, as I always am. Uh, first of all, looking... <laughs> Thank you. Looking back to 2015, uh, I don't think I need to say much because it's all been, it's all been said. It was clearly a, an excellent meeting on, uh, on many different levels, I think. In, in, in terms of substance, uh, for me, and I think for many of us, the, the dialogue we had on, on the WISIS Plus 10 review, and I know that uh, Marilyn has mentioned this and she personally contributed uh, an awful lot to it was was very important indeed the dialogue in terms of process and substance in substance in that we were able to interact with the co-facilitators on a wide range of on WISIS issues and on process in that the co-facilitators saw the energy the enthusiasm the commitment of all the different stakeholders from across the uh, from across the page if you like co-facilitators that were used to working in a a UN environment in the in the second committee and other committees in in New York were exposed to this sort of vibrant energy that came from the different stakeholders including the excellent participation we had from the young people and I think clearly that enthusiasm really did help in terms of the output that was achieved in uh, New York in in December I think the intercessional work that preceded the IGF was clearly important. The best practice forums clearly came forward with a number of initiatives, a number of discussions, which really did light up the room in, in many different areas. And I think they have an additional importance because, as we've seen, several of these initiatives, and many were taken forward by ISOC and others, involve people that never come to IGF meetings, involve people that get involved, perhaps because they they know about national IGFs, they know about regional IGFs, perhaps they can't come to the main IGFs, but they want to be involved in this dialogue. And this is just what's so important because this is the energy, this is the, the real enthusiasm that we need uh, for the future. The remote participation, again, that we had at the meeting, I think was, was first class. And finally, on, on the 2015 meeting, as Cheryl and others have said, the practical arrangements. I mean, when people ask me, you know, did you have a good meeting? And someone says, well, the lunch was good. I always think, well, how, how trivial, you know, why do we need to talk about lunches? But in fact, what happened in Brazil was, was so important in that everyone gathered together. There was this tremendous energy and really it was an excellent venue. And sometimes these practical arrangements really do sort of combine to make things a success. And personally, I love the site. I like that it was remote from the hotels. I love, I love the buses as well. And uh, it, was, it was really enjoyable. So 2016, uh, I'll say very little. Clearly, a lot of work to do. Uh, and we're lucky we've got such a committed MAG. Congratulations on all the new MAG appointees. It's really fantastic to see such a diverse and exciting MAG take shape. I'm sure we're going to have a success. I love the enthusiasm that Mexico came forward with. The arrangements seem, seem ideal. It is going to be an important meeting. It's the first in the mandate. And because 2016 is a different year to 2015. In 2015, there was so much pressure because of the WISIS and other events. This is the main event for 2016, the main event. And therefore, the eyes are upon us, as they say. And so I really do think it's uh, important. Uh, to finish off, just wanted to say how important I think the national and regional IGFs are. And we've all uh, been involved in, in, in some of these. They, they continue to sort of spread. And it's, it, it's fantastic to see in many different continents. And we need to be able to capture some of those ideas. We need to be able to capture the energy not, not to dictate what they do, not to structure anything, but just capture what comes out of those 
uh, for the good of us all at the, uh, at the IGF and at the uh, open consultation. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. And you certainly did leave up to your commitment to be positive. Uh, Sandra, you're next in the queue. Thank you very much, Ms. Um, Mrs. Chair, and welcome in this environment and congratulations to your appointment. Um, I want to make two comments. One, um, looking back to the IGF in Jean Pessoa in 2015, and another comment on the current process of uh, program drafting for the IGF 2017. But first of all, I would like to express our pleasance about the extension of the IGF for 10 years. We understand EURIDIC, the European Dialogues on Internet Governance, which is the European IGF, as one of the section, or as, as the European section to contribute to this global process. And also for us, it makes it much more easier now to have planning security, how to move forward for the next 10 years. So we are very much looking forward to this ongoing going collaboration. Um, to my first point, I would like to highlight um, the, IG, the IGF village and the way it was set up during the Jean Pessoa meeting. Um, we usually have to have, we usually set up a booth during the IGF and for us it's always a great effort to bring all the material there, to rent a screen and, and do all the logistics. And I must say this uh, last year's IGF village was of such a great value in terms of providing a space for communication, reaching out to new participants, serving as a meeting point. It was really truly the center of the, of the uh, conference and we had so great opportunities to interact, to get together, to have a meeting there, to have in-depth discussions that I would wish that a similar space could be available for the IGF in 2016. So thank you again for um, the Brazilian host team for giving so much effort into, into, this, um, into this village. My second point, um, and my second point, I would like to share some experiences we recently made at Eurodic in our program drafting process. Um, Time-wise, time we are always a little bit ahead of the global IGF because the meeting takes place in June, so we are already in the stage of shaping the program and forming org teams. And other than at the IGF, we are at Eurodic not calling for session proposals, for workshops or plenary proposals, but we call very generally for themes and issues to be discussed on the next Eurodic. Um, we, are, we are, so to say, not accepting or disregarding proposals. We try to merge all incoming submissions and try to accommodate them all in the program. This has been always a challenging step in the program planning process over the years, but um, I, we could realize that we had an improvement this year which, was really, which really made a difference. And I would like to share this with you. Maybe the IGF MAC can take elements from this process and incorporate this in, in their processes. Um, I know that also in, when submitting a proposal through the IGF uh, website, that um, there are certain categories where you have to submit your proposal under to. And this year, we incorporated subject matter experts for each category. This made it much more easier to merge proposals, to identify similar proposals. In the past, it was always the secretariat dealing with these proposals, I guess at the IGF it is more the MAC dealing with these proposals. But if um, this year we concentrated um, on each category, assigned a subject matter expert, and those experts were reviewing which proposal can go along with another proposal. And they really created meaningful subcategories. Afterwards, it was decided which category might go into a plenary and which uh, proposal might go into a workshop. 
We made the experience that other than in the years before, we had way less interventions when opening the draft program with the assigned proposal. So each proposal was incorporated in the program. They all got an ID. They could see, okay, I'm in this basket, I'm in this basket. And in the past, it was always a, quite a lot of communication in terms of, oh, I don't feel well, I was misunderstood, my proposal was different. But this year, with the inclusion of subject matter experts, which went through this beforehand, before a draft program was created, we had way less interventions in terms of changing the categories, changing the sessions, and this did speed up our process very much and made it for us at the end very clear, so to say, to have a mandate to go forward with this draft proposal, and we could almost incorporate all proposals. There were just a few exemptions which are then offered a flash session or a side event or pre-event, but really, and we had 150 proposals or 100, it was a joint a call with CDIC and, and Eurodic. For the Eurodic, we had 117 proposals. And I can truly say we could accommodate all of them. And this is really thanks to the subject matter experts. One is just next to me, it's Olivier Crepin Leblanc. I think there are more in the room, but this might be something we would like to share our experiences with the global IGF and be as much of help as possible in terms you want to learn more about these processes. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Sandra. That's very interesting, and we certainly look forward to um, any um, suggestions or advice on how we might move forward with the program this year. Not only is it um, in a compressed cycle, in fact, it's going to take place over summertime in the Northern Hemisphere, which does add an extra um, complication to the overall timetable. So um, really appreciate the, the input. Thank you. Uh, Susan, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair, and congratulations on your appointment. Um, my name is Susan Chalmers, and I have recently joined the National Telecommunications and Information Administration within the U.S. Department of Commerce. I'm offering my um, observations, however, as an observer and a former MAG member, um, a representative of the technical community. I'd like to thank Virat for his kind words regarding our work on the workshop evaluation and selection process, but more importantly to echo his comments in terms of being conservative to changes within the process given our compressed timeline. Um, I think that in t if one uh, area of focus um, could be isolated, it would be um, the in-person um, selection meeting of the MAG for the workshops. And I would like to again um, support Virat's idea for having a grid or a set number of workshops and clarifying the process before going into this meeting. That's a very important meeting, um, but it would be good to have clarity on that beforehand. And this should help alleviate the problem of having too many workshops. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Um, Morad, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, I didn't attend the, the draw PSO meeting for uh, due to professional obligations. However, I have some comments to make. Uh, I have a question to the Brazilian delegation. How many ministers attended the high-level uh, meeting last year? And uh, the same uh, issue is raised about the, the industrial leaders. I am putting, I am asking the, this question uh, because it's it's. Um, it's related to the visibility of the IGF within the uh, decision makers, both uh, at the government and uh, industry levels. Um, would like also to know uh, the perspective of Mexico regarding this issue in the context of the next IGF. Uh, I remember last year that uh, during the preparatory process, concerns, many concerns were raised re regarding the necessity of uh, improving government's participation. Uh, Again, uh, returning back to the Brazilian delegation, do you have data, uh, some figures regarding the government participation in the last uh, edition of IGF? Uh, I think also we need to, as a, as a MAG group, we need also to, uh, to uh, have more participation from the academic community. So uh, maybe we need to uh, more engage with the, uh, this community in the future. Um, 
That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Morad. Brazil? Uh, thank you for the question. I think this is a very important topic of discussion on how to further engage government participation. Uh, as I have said before, having participated in those with plus 10 discussions in New York, one thing we noticed was that for many uh, colleagues, even from our governments that are in New York, there is not a lot of familiarity with IGF. And that also uh, is the case in, in other areas of government. Uh, in, in regard to, uh, and there is an ongoing effort in, in that regard, one that we want to strengthen. But in, in regard to the figures uh, for last IGF, I'd like to turn to my colleague. I think probably he'll have uh, some additions in that regard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. And, and I'll gladly revert back to you. And, and uh, with, a more, with a detailed list of the high-level participation and ministerial uh, participation as well, and not only, and as well as the government uh, participation, I just would like to remind that this, this, uh, this meeting, the ministerial meeting, was organized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Brazil, and it was, it was organizing with the support of a wide range of uh, embassies around the globe, and it was very instrumental to, to have people uh, in, the, in the embassies promoting the event and getting in touch with local governments and, uh, and con having the confirmation of our participation in advance. I, I won't be able to give you the detailed numbers right now today, but uh, I will re revert back to you with a detailed list as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, and if I can just add that we uh, decided to designate it not as ministerial meeting, uh, but as high-level meeting because we wanted to make sure that the, the right message was uh, given that we were aiming at having not only high-level participants from governments, but high-level participants from all stakeholders, just, just for clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hassan, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, congratulations one more time. My name is Hossam El Gamal. Uh, I'm coming from Egypt, uh, representing private sector, affiliated to AFICTA, and also uh, contributing to uh, ICC base. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Brazil for uh, last year event. Uh, there are a lot of hard work done, very welcoming uh, staff, very welcoming uh, 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 contribution from uh, everyone. Um, uh, there was a good participation from high level people as well uh, during last uh, year. Um, I have just a few comments regarding uh, moving forward, if possible. Um, uh, I agree with Virat on the fact that uh, fewer session, fewer thematic session would be uh, a good thing to do. And uh, I go back to uh, my contribution last uh, year in the MAG, saying that if possible, uh, if we can have the workshop serving the thematic uh, main sessions, this would be good. It's like th today workshop would serve tomorrow main sessions. If we are able to do something like that, this would be very good in order to really um, integrate the work uh, to be done and conclude within the main sessions. Uh, second thing is, if possible, and being around the Internet, if we are able to start help starting a strong social media uh, promotion campaign in order really to be able to have more inclusiveness especially for uh, uh, de different developing countries, especially the ones that do not have currently national or regional IGF. Uh, this would certainly make an impact. And if we are able also to uh, promote or um, announce about any possibility of funding for people from LDCs, this would be as well uh, a good thing to be done. Um, one thing that might be of interest, it's subject to the MAC to discuss, is the idea of uh, not looking at uh, this year IGF um, uh, on its own, but as part of the 10 years plan. Now we have a 10 years mandate, so, and also we have parallel to that uh, the SDGs. Uh, so if we are able to look uh, in a, a more wider uh, um, uh, view, uh, for the 10 years or at least for a five years approach and then go back and see what we can do this year as part of 
a five years approach, this might be of value as well. Um, uh, finally, maybe uh, uh, again, the idea of remembering to integrate further sectorial uh, different sectors along, especially if we are going again to align uh, our work with the uh, SDGs. So uh, environment, uh, employment, use, um, health, finance, etc., and getting more and more from different sectors along. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hossam. Elizabeth, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Elizabeth Thomas Reno. I come from both Canada and France, and I'm speaking from the private sector perspective. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am the, a policy executive at the International Chamber of Commerce based in Paris. Um, I'm also the director of the ICC Basis Initiative, that's Business Action to Support the Information <coughs> Society. Since this is the first time I'm taking the mic, I'd like to say thank you to UNDESA and to the IGF Secretariat for their efforts between December and now to get this 2016 MAG established and to convene today's meeting for us. I'd also like to congratulate again and welcome our new chair. Um, I am extremely delighted to be joining this uh, first MAG of the new IGF mandate. And uh, I believe this is going to pr um, prove a new frontier and era for us as we have just been given this road ahead and, and concur with the um, comments made uh, just by Hossam on looking at this not just as a one-year exercise, but really what are we building towards. Um, I also wanted to recognize the um, very thoughtful and uh, um, worthwhile tribute made by the chair to our past MAG chair and the recognition of how significant Ambassador Carklin's contributions have been made uh, to both the IGF but also to the multi-stakeholder cooperation for internet governance across all of the um, WSIS communities and activities. And of course I'd like to thank uh, the Government of Mexico for the proposal for the 2016 meeting. We look forward to working collaboratively with you um, on this effort. And I would like to commend you um, for the efforts you've already started, working with other stakeholders in your community. I understand from our friends at ICC Mexico and, uh, and other colleagues in other stakeholder groups that are working on a team with you. And I commend you for doing what we always say, which is to think global and then start acting locally. So actually integrating that is, is a great sign for us. Uh, on the topic of this taking stock session, I would also like to express our appreciation to the host country of Brazil for the 2015 IGF effort. I know there was a huge team involved in planning and executing that. We saw on the ground an extremely motivated and energized um, community of Brazilian ambassadors uh, of, of all sizes and shapes who were really, really um, welcoming in our sessions and that was, uh, that was most enjoyable and echoed um, by all who participated. Um, ICC Basis has actually contributed a very detailed submission towards this discussion. Um, Chengatai raised many of the points that we, uh, we, made, we made in that summary, so I'm not going to reiterate all of them. I just want to highlight a couple of uh, additional points and um, perhaps reiterate some of the more important ones. On the substance side, I'd like to note that the intercessional work that was done was a significant effort. And uh, it's important that we recognize the IGF Secretariat and congratulate them for that extra effort because it did add um, an additional burden on already uh, um, shortened resources. And so I would like us to consider that as we move forward, the resources that we have at the IGF Secretariat and if we're going to load more intercessional work in a shorter period of time that we consider the impact of that and how uh, that can be managed and, and addressed. Um, I would also like, I think it, it, it's important to note that the achievement of the work on the connecting the next billion uh, was also um, very significantly helped by the drive and determination of Constance Bomilar at ISOC who, uh, who really, I think, put an, uh, a special personal commitment into um, successfully completing that, and so I'd like to thank her as well for those efforts. Regarding the main sessions, I, I would, again, reiterate, looking back um, at the 
past um, experiences both I've had at the IGFs, but also the reports. And um, you know, fortunately, my predecessor at ICC Basis was a very, very good um, uh, reporter and grabbed all of the information, cataloged it each year. So looking back on that, I, I do think some of the most positive experiences that we've had um, have come where there are, are, are fewer but more focused and, and, and uh, substantively strong uh, main sessions supported by uh, workshops, as our colleagues have said. Uh, again, respecting the guidelines process while choosing and containing the numbers of these so that um, the substance is strong and people are able to participate. Uh, I will echo as well that the sessions in between um, are extremely important uh, parts of IGF. This year was extremely uh, an extremely good example. Uh, the village was mentioned, the lunches were mentioned. Um, having rooms for bilateral meetings that are um, s large enough for delegations is um, was a little bit of a challenge this year and is an important factor uh, for um, for the meeting. So I would suggest that to our hosts um, for consideration. Uh, I will also say that um, not very long ago, Nespresso introduced a, a promotional coffee from Mexico that was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> and they have taken it off the market again, unfortunately. So we're all going to have to come to you. And my request is that uh, we will have this kind of delicious coffee accessible uh, around the clock because some of us are, are diehard addicts and, um, and like to sneak out of the sessions every once in a while and have uh, coffee in close proximity. Um, Finally, I would like to mention that uh, I, I think one of the big successes that happened uh, last year came from the strong link that the MAG built in the program with the wider global sustainable development agenda context. I think that we valued, we, we valued this and, and benefited from this because it contextualized our work in the minds of others who are outside the internet governance community. and that's, Doing so also allows us to stay uh, very close to the raison d'être, as we would say, uh, of this work. And so I would encourage us as we look forward to programs and, and themes ahead to consider that. There is a, a proposal uh, for intersessional um, work consideration in our um, ICC basis document. I will share that with people on the MAG again and um, raise it in more detail later on. Um, so I look forward to working with all of you um, towards a very successful IGF, working collectively and bringing in new perspectives and talents that are can contribute to this new phase of our journey and the goals that we set for it. Thank you, Elizabeth. Christina, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, my name is Christina Arida. I work for the government of Egypt, and I represent uh, Egypt uh, on the MAG as a previous host for the IGF. Um, allow me first uh, to thank you, Andessa, and to congratulate you on your appointment. I really look forward to working with you and with incoming and returning uh, MAG members. I also take the opportunity to, to thank Ambassador Karklins for guiding and leading the work of the MAG last year. Uh, I would also like to congratulate Brazil for the Joa Pessoa meeting, an extremely successful IGF meeting at an important time for internet governance. And um, I thank Mexico for their proposal of to hosting us this year in Guadalajara and uh, for their presentation earlier. Looking forward to a great meeting this year. Um, at first, I wish to express our pleasure for the extension of the IGF mandate for a new 10 years. We look forward to working with everyone towards further strengthening the IGF as a multi-stakeholder platform and multi-stakeholder process and enabling the global dialogue on internet governance uh, during this renewed period. I appreciate many of the comments that were put forward by previous speakers in taking stock of last year and looking forward to the next IGF. I'm not going to re reiterate them here, but I would just like to stress on one specific point. That is the issue of further engaging stakeholders from developing countries as was outlined by the resolution of the General Assembly. And in that respect, I would like to acknowledge and commend the intercessional work that was done last year by the MAG and the Secretariat, um, especially in reaching out to national and regional IGF initiatives. I believe this practice should continue and be further strengthened this year 
we need to bring in voices that are not commonly there uh, at the IGFs, as uh, Nigel mentioned, especially on subjects that are of common interest and on themes uh, where, the, where the opinion coming out, uh, coming in from different parts is a real additional to the dialogue. I also would like to commend the Secretariat for the support that they have been providing to the group of national and regional IGF coordinators. I believe the group has gained enthusiasm and momentum that has proved quite important in engaging stakeholders from all corners of the world. I hope uh, as we go forward that we can provide this group and through them the national and regional initiatives with the support that is well needed to grow further organically. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christina. Do you say you have the floor? Uh, bonjour, Madam. Merci. Good morning. Thank you, Madam. Thank you for giving the floor. My name is C. Can. I'm speaking on behalf of African Civil Society for WISIS. First off, I would like to congratulate you on your recent nomination and wish you every success in your endeavors to help the Internet community. Here and now, I would also like to congratulate Brazil for its IGF. It was very successful. That was the point of view of many observers in any case. I would also like to congratulate Mexico for agreeing to host the next IGF conference. Many thanks to the entire team for organizing all of this. Thousands of participants, hundreds of topics or tens of topics, dozens of topics for workshops is an incredible amount of work. Let me also draw your attention to one thing, to a number of points that have already been put forth by my predecessors First, for us to have good topics, very successful topics, at least in terms of Africa, I would like to say that it's necessary for the national processes to develop to the global, global level, uh, especially in the African continent where there are very few internet uh, governance forum conferences, so it's necessary to have high-level meetings there and based on those meetings I think that we will have uh, some good uh, feedback. I think that uh, some of the most important and most interesting feedback will come from countries where there have not been any EGFs. It's important also to involve the private sector and other actors at the state level and other levels. And let's try to ensure that we have lots of national IGFs. I've said this before, but I just want to say this again, that it's so important to have uh, IGFs in order to consolidate some of what we've achieved in certain countries. Let me uh, draw your attention as well to the fact that in Africa, the majority of our national conferences or regional conferences were possible thanks to the participation of civil society and indeed they were often the initiators of these conferences so let me make an appeal here for African civil society and for your support so that it can play fully its role that it will be able so that it will be able to make a significant conference to this incredible effort which is the IGC and let us ensure that uh, that the WISIS is a f is, is, is a success we know that the future is fairly uncertain in the field of human rights in the field of uh, privacy and we know that to the private sector it really does have a lot of influence in terms of internet governance so we really do have to think 
about how our lives will unfold with the internet tomorrow. And I can say this, that African civil society is one of the greatest contributors to this reflection. So I want to once again draw your accession to this fact and appeal to your support so that the African civil society will be present in Mexico and beyond Mexico. I'm here as a representative of civil society because I'm here in Geneva, but other people would want, would have liked to come as well. This is so important. It's so important from the point of experience. And the experiences and ideas that they will bring forward. And I think it's the same case not only in Africa, but in Asia and other continents as well. And the other thing I wanted to say is to, I want to endorse the colleagues, speakers before me, and, and say how important that sustainable development is as a topic for the conferences in the coming years, because this is really key, I think, Madam. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mark, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, it's Mark Carvel, United Kingdom government, uh, former MAG member. Um, the UK government has submitted detailed um, comments uh, in the consultation held earlier this year, so I won't recount uh, those. Um, we, but suffice to say, we support uh, endorse very much the positive comments that have been made uh, this morning and uh, and in elsewhere in the other comments about uh, the successful IGF in Jean Pessoa and we greatly appreciate um, all the hard work by the uh, Brazilian CGI team in uh, constructing and hosting uh, the event which was indeed very enjoyable and uh, a very uh, productive um, IGF, uh, one of the best that's ever been held. Um, I, I do want to uh, highlight one note of concern that uh, we expressed in our, our comments, and it, and it follows on from the last um, uh, set of comments from African civil society, in that we felt that the, the numbers of participants from Africa and Asia were lower than we would have hoped, given the overarching theme of sustainable development and one of the key outputs was uh, access for the next billion. So I think the experience from uh, Jean Pessoa highlights the importance of outreach to stakeholder communities in, uh, uh, throughout the world, but in particular from uh, developing countries and small island developing states in particular. And we very much hope that the national and regional IGFs uh, in those regions will help uh, with the outreach and um, bring up the level of participation uh, for Guadalajara. Um, uh, so the relationship building with the national and regional IGFs I think is a, has a vital uh, role to play in that. Uh, the IGF has to demonstrate uh, consistent with the CSTD's uh, recommendations uh, full outreach and participation from uh, by stakeholder communities in, in developing countries. Uh, I'm pleased to report in this uh, respect that the Commonwealth IGF uh, is being relaunched uh, with the help of the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization. The Commonwealth membership includes 53 states, many of which are in Africa and Asia as well as in the Caribbean. So uh, look out for that. The Commonwealth IGF website will relaunch um, and uh, that provides a vehicle for promoting the opportunities uh, for engagement, for contributing to, uh, to the IGF in, in Guadalajara, both in person and, of course, uh, as um, uh, remote uh, participants. So I hope very much that uh, uh, the... Uh, uh, attendees or, or people listening in to this uh, uh, open consultation session who are from the Commonwealth will, will uh, use that opportunity afforded by the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization. Um, so th that is my main point really, the criticality of, of outreach uh, to developing countries and uh, as a Commonwealth member the UK will assist with that process. Thank you very much. Thank you Mark. Uh, next on 
Segun, you have the chair, uh, the floor. <laughs> You're not in the, okay, not in the queue. Um, then Slotterman, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Slobodan Markovic. Uh, I work on ICT policy and uh, internet community relations at Serbian CCTLD registry, uh, which is a part of the technical community and a major supporter of internet governance initiatives in the region of Southeast Europe. Uh, for example, towards uh, the end of this month, we will host in Belgrade the second regional dialogue on internet governance, the CDIG. Um, I speak as a MAG member and the member of uh, uh, MAG Working Group on Remote Participation and will make a couple of remarks regarding online but also on-site participation following up on earlier uh, comments by Ginger Puck. Uh, at IGF in Brazil, I supported the online participation in the main room and uh, my impression was that uh, most sessions were uh, uh, that most sessions there looked uh, more like panels, with very few of them involving audience, uh, both online and in the room, in any significant way. Uh, some of the notable exceptions were main sessions on cybersecurity and zero rating. Um, IGF is a, is, a, is a really huge gathering and a rare opportunity for actual dialogue. Uh, we're wasting this opportunity, I think, if we perceive the audience just as those people who ask questions or make remarks at the end of the session if time permits. Uh, so we should seek to make main sessions more interactive and inclusive this year and not just push, push questions and comments towards the end of the session. Um, I would like to congratulate the Brazilian hosts for their efforts on providing excellent facilities and thank again all volunteers who supported the event in general and online participation in particular. Uh, this year's IGF uh, should raise the standards on online participation and enabling effective participation of people with disabilities attending both on-site and online. I look forward to working towards this goal with my fellow MAG members and our Mexican hosts. Thank you. Thank you, Slotterman. Um, we have three more speakers, a remote speaker, which I'll go to in a moment, and then um, Virat and Cheryl, um, because you've had the, the floor. Um, just want to point out that we're actually coming up to the end of this particular session, so we'll make a determination um, when to sort of cut the queue here and um, move any of the remaining um, speakers to the next session, if necessary. So remote participant, and I hate calling them remote participants as well, but I, you know, I have no visibility into who's actually waiting to speak or on the line, so count on Anya to introduce them. But Thank you. We have two interventions. The first one is from Sridi Prajmaha from um, Asia Pacific Regional IGF. IGF platform and national and regional IGFs have huge gaps. It needs to be reduced with efforts. I would like to suggest the MAG to use the committee to be used during IGF to raise awareness for regional and national IGFs. The second comment is from Saeed Zazai from Afghanistan. The post and in-conflict countries had minimum representations from all relevant stakeholders in the IGF 2015. Governments play a crucial role in the internet governance in these countries, surveillance, content filtering, poor internet infrastructure management, etc. Civil society efforts are not taken into consideration by the local governments, hence making it very difficult for true representation of civil society at the national level and also at the IGF and other relevant platforms. So if I may suggest that IGF 2016 have some data collected on each country's and each stakeholder's involvement in the process so that proper representation of all stakeholders. That's the end of the sentence. And we also have certain complaints that the um, uh, time zones are a bit challenging for participating online, as there are differences between times. Thank you. Thank you, Anya. And thank you to all the online participants as well, um, from whatever time zones you might be participating in. Uh, Virat, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll make uh, three quick points in response to some of the stuff that has been said, because we will get very deep into uh, this area tomorrow and day after we set up our criteria and selection, etc. So taking forward the point that was made by, by, by Susan, 
Um, the, one of the things that we spend a lot of time is to finally select, well, finalize the criteria and then finally select workshops. Um, as she said, there's an outstanding set of criteria that is already available. I said that and she kind of agreed to that. Uh, that was actually her, her contribution along with Fiona's. Um, the one thing that happened when we were, were getting to select this, and this is a reflection, was that um, in spite of having a very detailed set of guidelines on what to apply for, when we got into the room to pick uh, sessions, we added two more to it, which was uh, new ideas and sessions with government speakers. Um, and my colleague here, Nelson, and I had a long discussion on that and how to go and pick those. But I think it was an important point. My only point would be that please look at what has been circulated. In fact, look at what Liesl has circulated, which is an even more comprehensive set of documents from the workshop, selection, tips, etc. Let's add to that if you want to anything now, so that we don't have left, things left in the end. And it will also be for a more transparent process, because if new ideas is important for the MAG this year, we should say it up front. If government speakers is an important thing, then the panelists should, the workshop submitters should know that up front. So in addition to the two objectives that we had last year, three actually, developing countries, first timers, and round tables and not panels, but my colleague here just talked about not everything that seemed like a round table was a round table. So we need to sort of find a way to fix that and then add anything new as soon as we can now so that at the end we don't have to go through we start picking proposals at 60 for the last 10 years out of 100. Uh, my urge, I would urge the MAG that we should do it in a way that we start at 75 or 80 so that we have corrective measures now rather than later. That's, that's just an improvement because we need to show improvement over, over the last year. So that is one point. Um, of course, open to discussion. On the other, very quickly, uh, the points that was made on the remote and then Murad made those points and also was made by uh, uh, about the participation. So I have some numbers which I'll quickly run through for the benefit of the MAG. Uh, this, as I said, everybody has said this is an outstanding, one of the best IGS we've happened. But here are some hard facts, numbers that are from two sources uh, from the Secretariat, actually. One is the 2014 IGF. Mic for the speaker, please. 2014. Um, 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 <clears throat> chair summary, and then 2015 attendance statistics uh, of the IGF, which are on the website. So I'll just quickly give you some of those numbers. Actually, civil society, the gentleman who spoke about it, um, uh, did exceedingly well. Uh, they were up 11% vis-a-vis 2014. Um, governments were down 2% in terms of participation. Intergovernmental organizations were, cons were exactly the same. Private sector was down 12%. Actually, the highest drop uh, experienced in between two IGFs was the private sector vis-a-vis. Uh, uh, -vis, I'm talking about Istanbul vis-a-vis Jaya -vis, um, The technical community was down 1%, so almost the same. Uh, the media was up 3%. Um, On-site participation was down 11% vis-a-vis um, um, the numbers registered at uh, Istanbul. Remote participation was really up, so thanks to Ginger, 35% hike in remote participation or online participation, an outstanding result there. Um, overall, in terms of number of countries, that question was also asked, uh, we went down from 144 to 112, so a reduction of about 22%. In terms of regions, very quickly, Africa down 3%, Asia Pacific down 3%, Latin America, as expected, was up. Host country up 18%. That was the big youth contingent. So excellent uh, uh, move there. Eastern Europe down 2%. Latin America and Caribbean up 3%. Western Europe and others uh, minus 6%. Uh, On-site participation is at minus 11%. Um, and overall sort of number. So that, that's where it is. So one of the things I want to say, one is the outreach piece that I think was spoken about by the distinguished colleague from the UK government, but also I think the cost. Um, on the average, the cost increment between getting to Sao Paulo or uh, one of the large cities in Brazil, vis-a-vis -vis was about six to eight hundred dollars for Asia, about four hundred dollars extra for Europe. I just did some numbers on the net. The cost of actually getting to, I'm going to say this, Kotlahara, is 
almost the same as getting to Mexico City. So I think that will certainly, as, a, as in terms of cost, you're not putting an extra burden if you were to in a large city. So it seems lots of direct flights get into this. So it's probably a, in terms of choice. So apart from that, I think this is one thing that we've already um, sort of gotten over because that might have been a factor for some of this. Though civil society really uh, much higher in terms of participation. So I just wanted to leave those numbers. Last point, a uh, lots of point was made about developing country participation. Uh, I just want to say that uh, the, as I said, 200% hike in the number of developing country participation from in, in workshops. Uh, we can do better. I'm sure there is a way to do it. Um, and it also goes to the core of the improvements document of March 2012, the resolution of the UNG of December 2015, and today. Uh, so Hamo's statement in the morning, he talked about uh, developing countries, and I think you would see an ICC uh, basis intersessional work proposal for increasing developing country participation as a concentrated effort throughout 2016 uh, with the MAC and discuss when, when we go to that stage. Thank you. Thank you, Virat. And thank you for reminding us of those statistics from the Secretariat as well. And perhaps I'd even suggest um, the next time in the, in the summary of the IGF, maybe we include those right up front because I think it's actually a really good, helpful sort of reminder and, and scene setter. So maybe we can just do that next time as part of the Secretariat's summary. Um, Cheryl. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I actually was also going to respond um, to Mark's comment because I do think that he hit the nail right on the head. It's really key that we increase our outreach um, to developing nations. And uh, in part, Virat already answered, I think part of what I heard last year in conversations with folks, it was both the cost. Um, there were also some travel complications that folks faced. Um, the flights were a little bit longer. I think in talking to people, Istanbul was more centrally located from a number of different places so they could get there pretty easily. Um, but there are other things that, you know, host countries think of up front that are really important. For example, providing lunch in Brazil, that was incredible, you know, that, that really helps a lot uh, to cover all those meals for, for people who are coming who um, may have a hard time paying for the meeting. And so it's important to think of all of these things, you know, hotels that are centrally located, affordable, et cetera, on the front end in terms of upping participation. And then on the comment um, with respect to uh, making the sessions more interactive, I think that's exactly right. No one really wants to sit in a room and feel as though they're just being talked at. Um, and I think that'll also help with participation as well. If people feel they can come and they can really be a part of it, um, I think we should definitely work to keep including as many new voices as possible um, and keep including as many new speakers as possible to kind of share share the wealth of information, so to speak. And then um, just very quickly on the, the comments on the workshops, I think uh, it, it, what, what we did last year with respect to kind of helping along um, new proposals and highlighting new proposals really helped to increase the number of new proposers who came through. I think it's always important at the front end to offer guidance in whatever way we can. If I remember correctly last year, we put something on the website, I think, um, that kind of helped for someone new who had never submitted a proposal to go and see kind of what we're looking for, what should be included. All of those things are really helpful for someone who's walking up to it and you know doesn't have this sort of insider knowledge on what makes a good proposal, so to speak. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Cheryl. Um, Hartmut, you have the floor. After so many uh, comments, I like to relax. And first of all, I like to thank Mark, my good friend, that you learned to, sp to spell João Pessoa. And then Virat, I, I think there's hope that you will learn to speak Guadalajara, no problem. <laughs> but let's go to, the, to my main concern. Uh, about the, the youth participation, uh, we need to avoid, let's say, a competition that everyone now likes to take over this program. Constance already mentioned that ISOC is willing to support the program, and myself, CGI, we have an agreement with ISOC that we would like to maintain this coordination, will be an effort, and it's very, very, very important to mention that this project is not only ISOC or only CGI. 
We receive support from Google, we receive support from Verizon, and we receive support from Intel, and others are joining. So if we like to see more than 70 or 80 people, at, young people attending in Guadalajara, we are inviting you companies to help us to put some money together. In Brazil, we have webinars in preparation for all the young people. They was not only selected because they have a, a nice face or a nice, uh, uh, I don't know, country. So they need to work hard before we select them. We have more than 120 requests. Uh, they need to attend four seminars or webinars. Then we select the 70, so on, 75. We paid the hotel, we paid everything for them to from Mexico to Argentina to be part of the uh, event in João Pessoa. So uh, again, uh, ISOC and CGI together, we like to support the program and we invite others. And I, already I have information that some uh, uh, sponsors are already are ready to put money again for uh, Guadalajara. Uh, I have a discussion with uh, Yolanda and with uh, Victor that Mexi uh, Mexico also will be, let's say, part of the program. So let's do it together. My understanding is uh, that can be a parallel effort uh, that we can uh, coordinate in the same way we, that we do it this year or last year in João Pessoa. Uh, the, I, I don't like to see that everyone now starts to run his own program. Uh, the, my idea is to have a joint effort to put this under one umbrella and that we avoid energy and together we can do it in a very similar way that we do it in Brazil. Uh, only to finish, uh, the, this, this last week we have an event in Washington DC and I don't remember exactly, I think that eight or nine from the young people that we invite in João Pessoa participate on this event in Washington DC uh, about cybersecurity. So if we have time and money and energy to train young people, they will be following us and they will work together with us and we are preparing the next generation to be on our side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hartmut. Um, it's a very critical very critical program. Um, that actually brings us to the end of the time. We have the Salah who's in the queue. We'll pick up with you when we come back at um, three o'clock right after the break, if that's, if that's okay. Um, if we need more time on the taking stock and the IGF 2000, looking forward to IGF 2016, um, we will do that. So I'll have one more call for um, further interventions. And then again, just as a quick reminder, the agenda this afternoon will focus on the outcomes from the high-level meetings in December and um, other um, initiatives, other internet governance initiatives. So with that, I want to thank everybody for, I think, a very, very productive um, morning session. I don't know if Chengatai, the Secretariat, has any kind of announcements, public service announcements. Uh, no, we'll just meet back here at 3 o'clock.